Welcome back. It's the Hola. Penny Bloom Podcast. Oh. Episode 11. Yeah, 11. 11 of them. Get those double digits. We did it last week, but now we're now we're in 11. 11. We're just a little bit deeper into the double digits. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right, 11. If you're not hype, I don't know why. I, yeah, I mean, like, this is real shit. We're, we're really doing this. We made it to 11. Like, Be hype. No, I'm just kidding. We're yeah, really like, the only ones that should be hyped about this. Yeah, like, <laughs> you guys you guys can give a shit if you want, but we don't expect you to. We appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so what have you been up to this week, Tavares? Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot, a lot of same old, same old, another day, another dollar. Yeah, yeah. 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 What, uh, what TV, movies, anything you caught up on this week? Been getting into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, I put that, you on. That shit, that shit right there is fucking crazy. Like, literally wild. Like, that show just, like, like takes everything that you expect about, like, a, a spy sort of detective type show, and it just, like, turns it on its head. Exactly. And then it just keeps changing. And it's just like, you know what? Fuck you, no. This is not what's going to happen. But you think this is going to happen, but it's really not going to happen. You think that's going to happen, but it's really not going to happen. And then, boom, you never even thought that was going to happen, but it exactly. happened. Exactly. You know what I mean? And it's just and like, it's... what the? F- like, when is it going to end? Yeah, we were talking about this off mic, but, like, the way they, like, evolve their problems... Like, how they're slowly getting bigger and bigger. Uh-huh. And how, like, it's just something that, like, was slightly changed. And yeah. And they just keep slightly changing uh-huh. things until it's fucked up. And then yep. they fix it, and then they keep changing things until it's fucked up. And they keep uh-huh. doing it. Uh, yeah. And it's just like, damn. <laughs> this shit is fucking crazy. The, the, like, war, the Ward storyline, though, has to be, like, the funniest one of all. Because, like, the dude just keeps coming back, and they're just like... Jesus oh. Christ, and this he's guy. Like, he's like, people, like, come on, like me. And then he goes, you know what? I'm going to go work with Hydra. <laughs> You're like, ah, you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> when Scott put, like, four in his rib cage, I was like, yo, that's the most satisfying shit I, I think I've ever seen. <laughs> he's literally, she's literally just like, he's like, come on, come on, I'm going to help you get out. It's just like, what? Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> Bitch, I've been waiting to do this shit. <laughs> yeah, because, like, fuck Grant Ward. But, yeah. like, Anyways. a little bit, you're like, Nah. Yeah. <laughs> like I still like I remember when he was a decent yeah, dude. Yeah, but he wasn't. That's the thing. Like, but like, he was there was obviously at... a part of him that was like yeah. actually there. You it's know? weird. He's he's a really complicated human being. Yeah, it'd be nice to dive into an episode or something like that yeah, later. Yeah, we should. We, we ought should. to. But uh, yeah, this week was a. Uh, I worked on a lot of movies. Oh, movies really? this week. I watched uh, Detective Pikachu. Okay. Okay. How was that? Very entertaining. Huh? I, I was. I was never. A huge Pokemon kid yeah, when not, I was little, really but uh, I was always intrigued and I always wanted to get into it, but I didn't know where to start. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was kind of like, so how the, I was, was like, it? how the fuck do I do this? <laughs> so yeah, you don't have to know anything about Pokemon to get into Detective Pikachu. It's uh, is it animated? <clears throat> no, it's CGI. Oh, that's weird. It 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 feels like it's gonna be weird, but it's not. Where does where does where does Pikachu live? Like uh, it's house? like, uh, well, Pikachu is a detective. And he's voiced by Ryan Reynolds. Ah. And it's fucking hilarious. Okay. Yeah, like, it was a funny-ass movie because of that. Like, that's why I watched it. If, uh-huh. if Pikachu hadn't been voiced by Ryan Reynolds, I'm probably not in. Yeah. You know, but but he was. So I was like, all right, yeah, I'll give this a shot. Yeah. Um, I watched uh, a movie called The Big Lebowski. Pretty mm-hmm. iconic movie. I've heard about that movie. I haven't watched it. I'm pretty sure it's like classic. All, all-time stoner comedy. Oh, really? Okay. We should do a segment on that. What are the all-time stoner comedies? <laughs> oh, yes. That'd be think, fun. I, I can think of some. Oh, I can think of plenty. <laughs> yeah, that'd be that'd be a fun one. But yeah, The Big Lebowski, really good movie. Really entertaining. Uh, I watched a movie called The Men Who Stare at Goats. Mm. Which is... Uh, has about. has Jeff Bridges, George Clooney... Um, Ewan McGregor, Kevin Spacey, fuck Kevin Spacey. Um, I love Kevin Kevin Spacey as an actor though. Like, no, he's he's a great he's actor, so but he's good. such a piece of shit. Yeah, I know. Did you ever see that video uh, that he released after House of, after House of or he was kicked off of House of Cards? I did not see it. It's like this video, and he's like explaining himself. It's weird. I have to show you off off mic or whatever, but like it's it's super weird because he had already been cut from the show at this point, and he made this like like short, basically as Frank Underwood, but he doesn't say he's Frank Underwood, but he speaks like him. He's oh, dressed yeah. like him. The background. He's looks addressed like House in the of crowd Cars. like he's Frank Underwood. Yeah, he's got a little bit of the southern twang. And he <laughs> he ha- it's the most veiled statement ever. It's basically like, I mean, people are saying things, but what do you think? So he's just like, no, nah. like he's yeah, like, he's like, you don't have to believe it, <laughs> but he does it in the most creepy way, which only makes you think he actually he's did always, it. He's <laughs> like, always like, 
what's funny is during his House of Cards run, mm -hmm. it was during that show where I was kind of like, Kevin Spacey might be a little weird. Oh yeah, no, like because he goes in on the, like the 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 whole Frank Underwood like heartless type of thing. I, it I makes couldn't you feel like him as a person. Is I like couldn't that. really put my finger on it, but like throughout that show, I was kind of like, I don't know, Kevin Spacey's a little off. And then you look at like all the roles he's played, uh -huh. and he's always kind of off. Like that's always yeah. the kind of character he is. So you're like, huh? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's that's true. He, <laughs> and it turned out we were right. <laughs> he, he's, Sadly, he's a bit off. <laughs> Yeah, but that was a, uh, he is a good actor, and it just sucks when they're such pieces of shit. Fuck that guy, yeah, dude. Yeah, you do the um, shit. But yeah, that was also a really good movie. It was a comedy based on a true story, where like, mm. uh, it was called, it was following like, uh, George Clooney as a member of the New Earth Army, which doesn't use any, uh, uh, critical force. Like, it, they try their best not to kill people. Oh, okay. So, it was basically like, it was a group of people with psionic powers. Huh. Like, that the government was trying to work on and shape. Oh. Into, like, it's into, like, eleven-type beings. Yeah. And then, uh, obviously, it didn't pan out. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but it was wildly entertaining, and I was, and like, but it's one of those movies where, like, while you're watching it, you're like, is this boring? Yeah. Because <laughs> you're like, what's the point? You're like, why am I watching this? Yeah, what's the point? And yeah. then like, before I knew it, it was over. And I was like, oh, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. But yeah, and then uh, I, I rewatched Superbad. Oh, okay. Yep. Love Superbad. Gotta do that from time to time. Love Superbad. <laughs> I um, actually did catch a movie this week, though. Have you heard of uh, The Wandering Earth? I have not. It's on Netflix. It's like this... Um, I, it's in Chinese or something. I think it's Chinese, um, but you, so you have to watch it with subtitles. But basically, it's it's like this. Think of 2012. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. Think of 2012 mixed with Interstellar. Ooh. Oh, okay. It's, it's crazy, and like they, they had a hu they apparently had a huge budget. Apparently, it's like a, a huge like movie overseas or whatever. But they had a massive budget because this like the CGI work that they did on that shit was, was crazy. Good. Yeah, basically, oh. like the premise was that uh, the Earth was uh, like it was basically dying. I can't remember why specifically. I think it was getting too close to the sun or something, or maybe like the solar system is coming un uninhabitable for, uninhabitable for some reason. But basically, they have to guide the Earth like past jupiter in order to get to a new like solar system or something so that the earth can survive yeah. and like they build like these huge engines it's like this huge like worldwide effort but then there's also this like uh like space station that's out in front of the earth like kind of charting the course or whatever mm -hmm. but the citizens of the earth don't know that the actual plan by the leaders is that they only like the only pe only the people in the space station survive the Earth is gonna die. Oh, <laughs> it's fuck. gonna fall apart. So like, yeah, it's all about them like figuring out how to save the Earth and shit. It's, it's crazy. That does sound crazy. I almost watched uh, High Life with oh, uh, Robert Pattinson yeah, and so Three Stacks. Watch. Don't watch that. Watch um, Good Time. Watch Good Time. I tried High Life and like I'm gonna be honest that. Like, it was just really weird. And yeah, weird. I was watching the trailer, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to watch this. Yeah, no. I, I started, like, I was like, I swear, 10 minutes in, and it was just Robert Pattinson on the space station seemingly alone with this baby. And it's just, like, him taking care of it. And I'm like, what am I watching? Yeah, it's a, it's an A24 film, so it can, like, it can go one of two ways. Yeah. <laughs> Usually A24 films are either, like, really fucking good, and you're like, yeah. damn, this was really good, or they're like, huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, huh. You're like... Okay. They're those movies that I, I was I just see. talking about where I'm like, is this boring? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly how it's like. But but Good Time, that shit will have you hooked from the second it begins. Like, that was one of the greatest movies I've seen in a while. Man, then I'll have to check it out. I uh, I finished a new Netflix series that came out on Thursday, I think. On oh, Thursday. Yeah, how finished, was that? finished it on Thursday. It was uh, Another Life, is what it was called. Okay. Um, it went. It, wow, dude. Like, it was intense. Oh, really? It was. It was good. I'll, uh... How long is it? It's ten episodes. Every episode's anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour. Okay. Um, it, it, like I said, it took me a day. Like, an afternoon, really. Like it's, it didn't... it's a limited series, right? Um, no. Like, it looks like they could definitely go season two on that ass. Mm. <clears throat> but, uh... Yeah, for some reason, usually Netflix does it by seasons. They named this, like, a, like series one oh, instead yeah, of yeah. season one. Uh -huh. So, like, usually the only time I ever see that done is when it's a British production. 
Is and it? it didn't seem like it was. Oh, okay. So, like, I'm, I'm a little confused on why they did that. Also, not sure why they named it Another Life. Oh. Uh, Usually that's pretty evident in the show. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of different options for why they could have chosen Another Life. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, they're Maybe studying... Maybe they'll flesh it out. Like, yeah, I'm the hoping they on. do. But, like, they're studying, like, an alien race. So, like, it could be that's another life form. Oh, okay. Um, they have to go into this called, like, Soma Sleep. And while you're in that sleep, it's, like, a really vivid dream. So maybe that's the other life. Like, I can't figure it out. That would be crazy. Yeah, like, I, I can't figure it out. I've always thought, like, doing that type of shit, like, cryo sleep or just, like... Yeah. I feel like that would be really cool because your your perception of time is completely gone. Like, cryo like, sleep becomes a very it. important part of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. What does? Crow oh, sleep. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, you'll see. I can see that. You shall see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, there was a new episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. last night, I think. Wait, it started already? Yeah, I it's a... ABC air airs in the fall. No, nah, this is... Uh, they're in season six right now. They started... On Wait, what the fuck? Yeah, season six started what? about ten weeks ago. Oh, shit, so it's been going. Yeah, it's been going. Damn, I need to hurry up and... Wait, what is it, stream what is it on? Hulu. Really? Yeah, you can watch the current season Wait, on Hulu, have, except for the first few episodes. Do they have all of the uh, seasons on Hulu? No. Oh. They have the first five on Netflix, and then season six, like, after a certain number mm -hmm. of episodes. I really need to I really need to hurry up. I'm, I'm having a, a little bit of a problem, too. So, I'm finally, like, I'm going to have a room to myself this year. Yeah. So, that, that'll be nice, right? Yeah. But I've been thinking, I'm like, you know, maybe I shouldn't buy a TV. Or, like, have a TV in my room because I'm like, it'll be a distraction or whatever. And, like, I mean, then, I use it, but I was like, maybe I should just see what it's like to not have it. But then I think about that and I'm like, wait. Why the fuck wouldn't I have a TV? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I watch a lot of TV. You're like, wait, this is, like, a good 40% of my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so, like, what am I going to turn on when I just want to turn something on? Yeah, like, you're like, God damn it, I got to have a TV. I'm going to set my laptop on a desk and just get, get in the bed. Like, <laughs> it's too far away. Yeah. I can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'm thinking I might have to end up just getting a TV, but, you know. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out in due time. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Sounds it, like fun. It'll be fun. Roll the tape. You have now entered the Penny Bloom Podcast. Hosted by none other than Colton Robinson and Tavares Pennington. I hope you are prepared for a show unlike any that you've ever seen before. Or heard, I guess it's a podcast. So you aren't going to see anything. Got a big week in music. Big week indeed. Got a new Chance album, The Big Day. Got a new YBN Corday. YBN Corday. With The Lost Boy. Might I say, The Lost Boy fucking knocks. That shit slaps, yeah. Nah, I mean, uh, anything Corday does, like, he's one of those artists when he came out, like, the first song I heard by him was uh, the response to 19... Uh, 85. 85 yeah yeah <clears throat> and then he had kung fu after that and kung fu was a fucking bop like i don't know he's good the, the kid raps like i don't know yeah and like the, raps. the reason i never like fucked with him like a while ago is, uh -huh. is because of his artist name which it which really? sucks but like yeah I'm, like t like typically i can i write off people just uh -huh. by like what their name is and if you have an abbreviation in your name odds are i'm gonna be like okay <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. I'm not, I'm not here for this. I, I'm, I might too, but I had already listened to YB and Namir at that point, and I, I thought yeah. his shit was fire. So I was like, oh, they're like a group, and I was like, I listened to Almighty J, and I was like, nah. And then I listened to Corday, and I was like, oh, Corday's we, the coldest. We got something here. Yeah, yeah we, Corday, Corday is nice. Is the coldest. Yeah. yeah, I like how just like the the YBN group in general does their stuff. Like as far as being like young boss niggas like like that's what it stands for like mm -hmm. i think they do a good job at that because they, they built up like this this pretty solid foundation of artists kind of behind uh, uh mostly mostly N namir and now corday and then yeah. i think almighty J like dated like like black china or something for a little bit <laughs> yeah he's he's like the, the way that i've had i've heard them described it's like namir is just kind of like gangster rap and then 
uh, Almighty J is more like trap, like yeah. hype shit, and then Cordae is like the one that got the bars, obviously. Yeah, like he can spit this shit. Yeah, he can actually rap. And he can, bro. Yeah, he, he, he really shit. can. Yeah, and it's crazy to like he, he, see him like kind of grow in this short period of time because he's only really been out for a, a year, Like maybe? a little over a year, yeah. Yeah, a little over a year. So he's, he's like <laughs> really young into this, but he's make, like made a lot of uh, success and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you have you seen any of the XXL stuff? I have, I have. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. All right. We'll have a little segment on the double XL here in a sec. <laughs> right? Yeah, but uh, yeah, the Corday album was good. Got any uh, early favorite songs? Uh, so I will say, broke as fuck. That shit. That shit. Yeah. That shit slap. That did slap. Um, I really like R and P, Anderson Pac. God, and like, you had Andy Pac and J Cole yo, on that track Andy when they were going back and forth, and he said something about Kobe and Shaq in '03. Uh-huh. Like I was like, no, <laughs> no don't do no. it to him, J Cole. <laughs> yo, no, yeah, that's crazy. I, I like when uh. Corday and uh, Pac are going back and forth, and Corday was like, "Man, I was about." He was like, "I was like six years old," and Anderson Pac was like, "I was like sixteen years yeah, old." Yeah. I was just like, "Oh damn, they are like that's a big age, age difference." Gap. Yeah, it's it's crazy though when you think about that. How like some people like because Anderson Pac didn't pop off till like 2016. 2016 when he made the Exit cover. Yeah, uh-huh. and that that that's only what three years ago. Yeah. So like he he obviously had been making music and everything, but he didn't pop off for a long time. And Corday is like ten years younger, and he's popping off right now. So like yeah. I don't know. It, it's weird how the music industry works. It's, yeah, the it's music industry is you just never know who's gonna pop off. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, it's so good. So good. I also yes. liked uh, Thanksgiving a lot. Thanksgiving was fire. Yeah. yeah. Mac and cheese up in the oven. Grandma finished <laughs> cooking. You know, Thanksgiving Cor- around a quarter. Need banana pudding. <laughs> Corday has a has a lot of that like southern influence, but it's also like he, he. I think he. I think he speaks to a group of people that aren't typically spoken to by like rappers and stuff. And it's like this group of kids who who isn't like I don't know how to explain it in politically correct terms, but <laughs> basically like go for it, Tavares kids that aren't dumb you know yeah. relatively smart they they like rap but they're also you know not not blind to to you know other shit you yeah. know what i mean yeah and it's like because I, I feel like corday is like a really good dude and he doesn't like do a lot of the things that other rappers do yeah but he can still kind of represent himself accurately in like kind of his his upbringing and his his story i get you i get you uh yeah this whole like it was so chicago oh yeah it was so Chicago, and it felt so. It felt really acid rap to me. Like I don't know why, but like there was something about it where I was like, "This feels really Chance." Like I felt Chance's influence big time. Uh huh. Specifically, the influence from acid rap. Yeah. And I, I loved it. Yeah, I mean Chance and Corday together. Together was, on Bad Idea, that yeah, shit was Bad Idea. I mean, crazy. it's been out for a while now, but that song is like that song is a quality song. Oh yeah. Like when they released that, I was like, I've okay. been around the world four times looking for parking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'd be like that sometimes. You know, I said I, that I the other day God. when I was in traffic. <laughs> really? I was like, man, I've been around the world four, four times, times looking, looking for, for parking. parking. Nobody else was in the car, so nobody heard it. But yeah. like, I said it to myself, and I was like, nice, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nice one, Colton. It, it, it's the small wins. It's the small yeah. Wins. I was like, <laughs> I'm glad that occurred to me. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know what? Let's let's jump into Chance. All right, Chance. Chance Where do you want to start here? Are we going to do his whole evolution? We yeah, going, yeah. We going you from know, 10 Day to the Big Day? Let, let's start. From 10 Day to 10 the day Big to Day? The big, that's the episode title, folks. From 10, 10 day, day to, to the, the big, big day. day. You know, because it's it's 10 Day. And it's the Big Day. And it's the journey between the two. Yeah. You know? So, so we'll start with 10 Day. That 10 shit. Day. Gosh. That shit. Like, to, to do that at... at however young he was basically the story behind 10 day was that he recorded Chance was in high school got caught with weed on campus got suspended for 10 days and recorded it all in those 10 recorded days recorded this project put it out and like just blew up like yeah that, that's basically how it went yeah and like that's just a crazy like crazy thing to see happen especially like 
when it did, like, 10 Day came out 2012, right? Yeah. That's before the internet was huge. Like, obviously... I mean, like, yeah, it's before, it's before like, people were really popping off through the internet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, and honestly, Chance kind of pioneered the whole SoundCloud thing. Like, he, I think he's probably, he's the most successful SoundCloud rapper to come out. The oh, first, probably, too. by far. And... I mean, he's got three Grammys under his belt. Yeah. As a SoundCloud rapper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You, you, he got he got rap album of the year on a mixtape. <laughs> he did, he did. I love that line. Uh, the uh, what was it on? Uh, all we got. It said they said uh, they said you needed an album to win it to win a Grammy or something. What was that? What was that line? Or you need to sell your album? To oh win yeah, a Grammy. on uh, on Ultra Light Beam. Yeah, oh Ultra said, Light Beam. I says you need it. to sell it to snatch the Grammy. Yeah, yeah. And then and then he sold it and he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he snatched the Grammy. But no, I think the next bar is like he's like, uh, oh, but we gonna, said, make, but it we so gonna make it so in free in the bar, in the bar so, so hard that it ain't one gosh darn part you can't tweet. Oh man, yeah, no, that that's just like great. I I love uh, Ultra Light Beam just should be a chance song. Mm. Like he mm. fucking destroyed that. Oh song. my goodness! Like I remember when I saw him perform that live, and he when he said like foot on the Neville's deck to the break of Pangea. He, he like stomped and he was oh. getting into it so hard. I was like, oh my God, I'm in love. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. Chance, I love you. Yeah, and like, what's funny is like, I haven't been like a full throttle like Chance fan since 2017. Yeah. Because like, usually that's how it works for me. No, I, I, I'm really, I remember I'm that. really keen on an artist for like a little bit and uh-huh. then something else will come out and I'll focus on them for a little bit. The big day when I was listening to it for the first time, Yesterday, I heard a song, and it was the first song, and he said, we back, and I was like, he said, and we back, and like, I, I got a tear in my eye, I was like, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> I was like, it's, I was like, it's time, Mama, we made it, <laughs> we gathered 10 day, like, it's funny, we were just talking about this, how it's like, not, on its own, it seems like it wasn't exactly good enough to harbor the kind of response that it did get. Yeah. But, like, thinking of it in the context of, like, Chicago, because that's where it popped him off. He wasn't mm-hmm. big nationwide after 10 Day. He was big in Chicago yeah, after 10 true. Day. And then oh, most but of his features on you, Acid Rap were Chicago guys. There yeah. were Vic Mensa, you had Twista, and you had... But, like, think about how easy it seems to be to break out in Chicago. Yeah. So many people break out in Chicago just, like, from start... Like, a lot of, like, a lot of fame, like, so uh, take I don't know Juice World, Juice World, Famous Dex. Uh, actually, I think the best example is Cole Bennett. That's a really good example. Cole Bennett is someone who is just making music videos and like, he literally I I, I was watching and uh, uh he, he has a TED Talk actually. Just totally should check that out. Cole yeah. Bennett's TED Talk is really good. He's just a dope dude, but he's basically talking about how like yeah, so we made like this Famous Dex video and then this dude named Lil Uzi Vert hit me up and he was like, hey, you want to make a video? And like, at this time, Lil Uzi Vert was not popping. Yeah. Or he was not popping to where he would eventually get. And he just made a video for him. Next thing you know, he's got the Migos on his line like, hey, we're going to fly you out to Atlanta. You're trying to do this video? And he's like, what? Uh, the Migos? <laughs> like, <laughs> Migos? <laughs> like, uh, uh, Quavius? <laughs> <laughs> Quavius? <laughs> yeah. And like, so like, he literally like, on two day notice just flew out like the next day flies out to Atlanta shoots the video and shit and he's like basically at that point it had just been me and a camera and like you know like not much real work and they like the Migos obviously have production studios yeah, have production and value yeah. and like a, a ton of shit and he's like I what the fuck like yeah. this is crazy but like to to blow up like that like so quickly to just like the right person see the right thing and then like from it's there crazy it seems to be something that you can do in Chicago, like yeah, it's like somehow it seems a little bit more accessible. Yeah, in Chicago. Yeah, because that's exactly what happened with Juice World too. Yeah, and Ju- Juice, Juice World Juice... popped off like seemingly overnight. Like, yeah, it was, it crazy. was crazy. You just put out uh, what all girls. All girls are the same. Yeah, all girls are the same. I think that was the first one that really popped off. Uh huh. And then he put out Lucid Dreams, and then it was just a rap from there. And Lucid Dreams, that was it. Like that was the song. That was, was yeah. That man, dude, like. Say what you will about Juice World, that that shit. Bro, boring. he's good. He's, he's good. a good he's, artist. He's good. Like he makes good music. I didn't necessarily like his last album, but uh, Death Race. It was uh, yeah. I mean, like I saw weird. the title and I was already like, eh. yeah, me too. I saw the the album art and I was like, Ugh. what? <laughs> I was like, why did you do? I'm this? like, this looks like so like like 
less professional than you it should yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. Like, looks like someone made this in their garage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there were songs on it that were good, but you know what? This is about Chance, Ben. Yeah, this is about Chance. This is about Chance, right? Chancellor the Rapper. Please say the rapper. Chancellor the Rapper. Please, Please say the rapper. rapper. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 10 Day, it's got this, looking back on it, is so much better than my first listen to it. Mm-hmm. Like, when I go back and listen to 10 Day, I'm like, I'm overfilled with this, like, sense of nostalgia and, like, wow, this is a classic yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And it's a classic because of who Chance has become, more so than the music itself. Uh-huh. Which you can't say for a lot of artists. Yeah, no, you can't. You really can't. Because yeah. Ch- I feel like Chance is just a personality within his music. Kind exactly. Of. Like, it, it, you listen, like, even just yesterday, listening to Chance and then flipping and listening to Cordette, like, I listened to the Chance album and I feel like this is, like, a very specific feeling. Mm-hmm. It, it, it he makes good quality professional music you know what I mean yeah which is good and that's the the same perception I got from coloring book but this album was a lot different from coloring book still but then you go listen to Corday and you're like hmm this is like different. this is what you expect yeah this is what you expect and it's not necessarily like this like streamlined sort of sound or theme yeah it's not like it's not like this thing that like blows you away it's more just like this is like what rap music typically is yeah exactly that's what that's what's cool about Chance is like he's a lot like Kendrick in a certain way that like the way I view them because he's evolved every project exactly yeah because like 10 day Chance is not the same as Acid Rap Chance and Acid Rap Chance definitely is not not Coloring Book Chance the closest he's ever been is Coloring Book and The Big Day uh huh but it's still not the same yeah, at all. it's really not. And that's how Kendrick worked from Section 80 uh-huh. to Good Kid, Mad City, and Good Kid, yeah, Mad exactly. City to, it's, to it's Pimple Butterfly of a great and so artist. on. I've, yeah, it is. I've always felt like as an artist, you have to strive to change yourself every album. Otherwise, you're just going to keep putting out that same sound. And, and people are going to get bored. People are going to get tired. That's, yeah. that's why I'm like, that's why Drake, I'm just kind of like, Drake? Drake? <laughs> Yeah, he did. He, he kind of. I mean, like it's always good. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah, it's just yeah. never new. It's, yeah. just... It, it's like look, I'm trying to think of a good example of someone who just like kind of puts out the same project every Future? time. Future, perfect example. Yeah, <laughs> that that like I don't. That's why I don't really listen to Future because I'm like, DS2 was fire. But then he went but then out and he made released four D- different DS2. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> then he made DS2 three times over. <laughs> yeah. And you're just kind of like, okay, but yeah, let's do something new. Like, yeah. and I feel like, yeah, it. But that's why Chance has really, really done well for yeah. himself. And uh, Ten Day was a great beginning, and uh-huh. he's only built from there. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. Uh, what was your favorite song on Ten Day? Yeah. Um, I'm I'm partial to Prom Night. Okay. I don't know. Ever since the first time I listened to Ten Day, that's always been the first my go to. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't know. I I just love the feeling. It just feels uh, like yeah, like prom night. Woo! Yeah. Did, did <laughs> High you school. did you listen to it on prom night? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Of course I did. Of course. Uh, it was the caption for my prom photos. Oh, uh, yeah, what was it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, and it's all right, and it's okay, and oh, we're all oh, good, okay, and okay, we're homies. Yeah. Uh, but I think I think my favorite's either gotta be nostalgia or missing you. Nostalgia's so just good, like the dude. first time listening to Ten Day, those songs come on and I'm like, word like word <laughs> is like that chance like straight out the gate like what? I mean, we can't talk about it without mentioning a hey ma. Yeah. Hey ma. Hey ma. Hey ma. <laughs> it's so good. It, it's I don't know what it is. Like how does that? I, I just don't understand kind of how high school kids make music that good. Like yeah, this is crazy. Like, Family was great. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I remember listening radio. to that to Ten Day no. and being like, every song on here is great. Like yeah, like it's good. This is like I. I can listen to this. This is one of those projects I can listen through and be satisfied with every single song on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's not something that like most albums are great at accomplishing. For sure. But like it's the difficult. best, the best artists definitely do it. Yeah. And then uh, Ten Day was the lead into Acid Rap. Mm. Yes, indeed. Acid Rap's a classic. Acid Rap came out the next year, right? Yeah, twenty thirteen. Yep. That's crazy. Yeah, the turnaround between Ten Day to Acid Rap uh-huh. is insane. And it's even more crazy to me that one he changed so much like in those albums, and like okay, so this is a weird thing that I kind of want to talk about. I didn't listen to Chance for a long time because what I knew of him was just acid rap, and I don't know. I wasn't 
it wasn't appealing to me like that aesthetic that like that mood or whatever and like i'd heard some of the songs and like it was just like weird and off base for me at that time yeah i guess you and then like come to find out like it wasn't even like that much of a druggy album or anything no like, not at all i think he did if they said he did acid once or something yeah he did acid once <laughs> and he just kind of based the whole album off of that and i was just like well i mean okay that makes okay sense. i thought he made like the whole album off acid or so did i yeah first time i heard it <laughs> yeah and like why else would you call an, al- an album acid rap like that but uh Going back and I I, I I remember going back and listening to it and I had one of the most transformative re listening experiences ever. You were like a mixtape. Ah. And I was just like, wait a minute. Wait a wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Because at the I'd only really liked Juice. Like that was really my only favorite. Like Juice. I was, I was so sad he couldn't get that on Spotify. I was like, Dude, it Apple does Music. now. Wait, it's on there now. Yeah. I thought he couldn't get the sample cleared. Oh, I don't. Oh, wait. Maybe he didn't. If you if you play it, Juice is on Apple Music. No, play it real quick. I think it's like uh, this like snippet thing. Oh, yeah, it is a snippet. Yeah. It, so basically, what he did with it, which is still really cool, if you listen to uh, Juice on streaming services, he just plays like this thirty second clip of him talking. Basically, he's like, I couldn't get the sample cleared, but uh, for each like each each stream that you or each time that you stream this album, it contributes to like funds for like like uh shy works i think oh yeah uh so like it's basically like a, a donation song or whatever every time you listen to it oh, that's so cool. i was like oh that's that's a neat that's thing nice yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah acid rap dude ah just like top to bottom i look at it and i'm like fuck yeah there ain't a bad song on this bitch acid rap is that it, it's it's there's really not like what, what's your favorite song in acid rap oh that's so hard yeah <sighs> I mean, you got Cocoa Butter Kisses, oh, you got yeah. Juice, you got Chainsmoker, I love Chainsmoker, Acid Rain, That's Love, Favorite Song, like, it's all good, Kisses. Lost, oh my God. Push a Man, Are you my push a man? Oh, and then like Paranoia, the second half of that song, oh, it's fire. Paranoia is that I, But shit. like, if I gotta go, like, absolute favorite, probably Acid Rain. Mm-hmm. Kick off my shoes, tripped acid in the rain. And I was like, damn. <laughs> damn. I was like, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta go either paranoia or <sighs> cocoa butter kisses. Cocoa butter kisses and par- like ugh, cocoa ah, butter kisses so, is just so like, cold. D- d- I mean, it's not cocoa. It butter was, it kisses. was the longest time before I could figure <sighs> out what he was meaning by cocoa butter kisses. Yeah, because I was like, what is a cocoa butter kiss? And I just listened to the lyrics and I was like, oh talking about a cigarette yeah that's just crazy to me like that you make a song like that like about a cigarette like i love yeah. when people like do like do shit like that like um, when it seems like it's about like a person yeah but it's just something yeah like i don't like this this metaphor as much but logic had the nikki Ni- the nikki metaphor yeah i thought that was super cool because yeah. i'm with my lungs for you in my veins <laughs> yeah because i'm listening to it and like he re- references nikki a lot on under mm-hmm. pressure and you think it's a girl yeah. until the song nikki comes and he's like i'm addicted to the nicotine and i was like Oh. oh okay because it like symbolizes like you know yeah. like how strong the connection like i was just like hmm that's that's neat that's great yeah that's dope i like uh on cocoa butter kisses though what what made me get it was the um was the line where he was like uh where he's like what do you say like holes in my sh- holes yeah. in my hoodie or something cigarettes on cigarettes my, my homies think i stink i got ho- wait i got Burn holes in my hoodie. All, all my, my homies, homies think, think it's dank. dank. Yeah, I got that go go but kisses. I was like, yeah, oh, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> but that's just so neat. Like that that hook is one one of one of one. Cigarettes on like, cigarettes. My homies money, think I stink. I got burn holes in my hoodies. All my homies think it's dank. I miss my cocoa butter kisses. Yeah, it was so good. Right now we got Smoke again playing, which smoke, is good. Yeah, that shit is. Absol gets pretty uh, isn't it um dirty in this? He said like, "Let me put my mouth where you potty boo." <laughs> and I heard that and I was like, "All right, next." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like maybe this is a different conversation, but Absol just never really hit for me. I, he's got certain shit that hits for me. Okay, but I, like, his like flows, I loved, I loved Do It Thou Will. I, I remember when that came out and you were listening to that a lot, and I listened to it and I was just kind of like, ah. Uh, I, I liked uh, I liked the song Drugs with Mac. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I D- love Mac. drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, R.I.P. <laughs> yeah, sad. God damn, why'd you bring that up? I didn't mean to. Fuck you. 
It was just, it was in the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, man, just, man, Mac. Mac. Goddamn. All right. Acid rap. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good mixtape. Good mixtape, yeah. Quality. Good ass mixtape. Good ass mixtape. Yeah, wasn't it going to be a name, something like that? Or no. Uh, it, the, the first song's called The Good Ass Intro. Okay, Good Ass Intro. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Chance has a he has a he did a uh, an incredible job with that project. Even as far as like the, uh, you, you know how the the album art happened. Yeah, it was just a picture with a yeah. fan. I was like, that's crazy. Like, how? Why did it look like that? I'm so confused. He's like, yeah, <laughs> but like that's the best picture with the fan. You, if you get a picture with a fan like that, you have to. Make and it that fan now cover. has a picture with Chance that inspired the cover of his breakthrough mixtape. That's crazy to me. That is. Like somewhere out there, it's just a dude who took a picture uh-huh. of Chance, and that picture is like iconic now. Oh yeah, yeah. I love how Chance. Like, I think Chance is one of the best social media artists. Like, oh he is. Period. Like, and like we're kind of in this age where it's like the be really like we're witnessing the beginning of social media and like the the rise of all that. Yeah, shit. we we like we don't have any idea how all this shit's mm-hmm. going to like like. And one day there will be like studies about yeah. like how social media over a lifetime affects someone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it it will and like be. We're we're like ten years in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ten years in. How's That's crazy going? to me. It is crazy, but I I always felt like Chance was really good about being uh, active on social media and like interacting with his fans and stuff. Oh yeah, he does a great job. He's always been one of the best Twitter uh, Twitter personalities, who's also a rapper. Um, he's done like really cool stuff on Twitter I feel like he's done like a ton of uh, I remember he had his playlist a, a while back uh, oh yeah yeah he, he's like I've seen him post like jobs on there been like I need like this yeah, uh, I, need, yeah I need hit whatever. me up if, if, yeah. you, if you if you think you're qualified or something and it's just like oh, okay damn. yeah and like you just scroll down the comments and everyone's like chance <laughs> pick me <laughs> <laughs> when will you learn <laughs> I don't know why. Wait, what is that from? What is that from? It's a vine. When will you learn that your actions have consequences? (laughs) Oh, man. Vine. What a classic. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah. Acid Rap was great. Acid Rap was great. Great mixtape. And then we get the pinnacle. Well, well, first he made us wait. He did make us wait. That was some bullshit. Made us wait three years. Some, some and to be honest, I wasn't bullshit. really on Chance until right before he dropped Coloring Book. I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't even on Chance until he dropped the Coloring Book. Yeah. Because I didn't fuck with acid rap, so then Coloring Book came out. I listened to that. I'm like, wait a second now. Wait a wait. Hold up a goddamn second. This shit is fucking fire. Yeah. Yeah. Coloring Book, like, to, I think it has to go down as like his like one or two album. Oh, it will be. Like it, it has to. Like it, no matter what he does from here, it was I, that. Good. It was just that good. Like and honestly, it's weird because I feel like it doesn't have the same. I don't get the same feeling listening to it now as I did in 2016. Oh, I don't either. But I still remember that feeling. And yeah, I, but like it, it's so weird though because like usually albums like that can bring back that feeling. I don't uh-huh. get that with Coloring Book either and yeah. I can't really explain it. Yeah, I don't either. It's it's really weird. I think it's because I listen to it that much. Uh, yeah, I think that might be it Like, I think too. I listen to it way too much for me to be like... <laughs> like I'm, I'm going to be honest, sometimes I gotta skip same drugs because I, I just know it so well and I'm just kind of like... I wanna hear something else. Yeah, it, it's, it's a really slow song and you mm-hmm. gotta get into it and sometimes, you know, I'm just not down for it. But you like, do the same drugs no It's more. a beautiful song. Oh, like, so I still, like, good. every time I skip it, I'm like, I, I, I'm not skipping this because I don't like you. <laughs> it's, 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 you feel like you have to apologize for yeah. the song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, I should listen, I know, but like, I just want something a little more upbeat. <laughs> <laughs> I get you, I get you for sure. I'll skip the rest of the song then. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it just made me think of that, but like, uh, summer friends, that shit. Oh, that honestly wrote like summer friends don't stay. Yeah, that became one of my favorite songs. Like later into listening to this album, like summer friends is one of those songs where I'm just like, yeah, this is a this is a. Bomb. Oh, dude, I love I love it anytime Francis and the Lights and Chance oh, yeah. team up, dude. Mm-hmm. They did again on the big day. Oh yeah, on the title track, uh-huh. the big day. That 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 oh the title track oh. was so good. 
It was so, so good. good. Like it has it has without a doubt my favorite part of the album. Oh really? Yeah, it's when uh it's when him and Chance are both together and they're saying uh, uh the only way to survive is to go crazy. Oh yeah yeah. They're like the only way to survive is to go crazy. I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like that shit's like good. Word word. <laughs> <laughs> like ah, but yeah, no that, that ah. We'll, we'll yeah. get to the big day. Coloring, coloring book, book though. <laughs> yeah, coloring book. I also think um, got him three Grammys. It did. Three N- Grammys. No problem. Got Independent th- artist. Independent artist. Yeah, I think no problem though got played the fuck out. Oh, it did. It was bad. Like, everywhere you go, that song that was song playing. That song was playing. Like, <laughs> it was literally, like, I think everybody knew Why that song. Like, no pro- like, and, like, you know, obviously it was a good song. It had Wayne, it had 2 chains. Oh, I mean, it was a great song. It was a great song. Dropped it 10 minutes before the album actually came out. Oh, really? Tape. Yeah, fun fact. That's what, like, got me hyped for it. It was, like, it was, like, supposed to drop at 11 p.m. Uh-huh. At, like, 10.50. He dropped, no problem. It was uh, like just a little taste. So you just listen to it and you're, and like, you're like, <laughs> you're like, fuck, 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 now. <laughs> no, but that, that was. You don't want no problem, want no problem with me. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, we didn't even get to all we got. Like, mm. I just love how it comes uh, on. It's like, da, 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 da. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and we back. And we back. And we back, and we back, and we back, and we back. Oh, it's so oh, good! Oh god damn! And Kanye just comes on. Uh, oh man, like the it, you know Kanye freestyled those drums. Yeah, we've talked about this before yeah. on the podcast. Have we? Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> like I think I think there's been a good like five or six little conversations we've had that we've had the exact conversation before <laughs> in this episode already. <laughs> Probably. <yeah. laughs> it's just let you know these things we're saying are true. Probably. Yeah, like that. Mostly. We kind of. We just do this. Yeah. We, just, we just do it. We do it. D- do it good. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Shaka. Shaka. Fuck, dude. You're not even saying anything. Yeah, sure, dude. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> but yeah, Chance. <laughs> the rapper? The rapper. But yeah, coloring book is fucking iconic. It was, it was. For I mean, sure. we didn't even touch on like we're not even touching on like surf, and we're not touching on Merry Christmas, Little Mama Part One and oh, Two. We're not touching shit. on any of this shit. Honestly, but those is all fire. No, I'm not even gonna lie. Merry Christmas, Merry Little Christmas, Mama. Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas Little, Mama. Little Mama. I remember just like that song just makes me think of snow in December, bro, and it's Christmas so... trees, and just like how I felt that that. That particular that night, yeah. Like, no, actually, I think I listened to it Christmas morning. Oh, because I think it came out Christmas morning it or came the night out before. On, it came or, out uh, a couple days before. Oh, did it? Okay, yeah. so then I guess I'd already been listening to it, probably. Yeah, but I just have like these such distinct memories associated with that project, yeah, and that time of year. And it's like I can't even listen to it if it's not. December, oh, yeah, I can't listen to Merry around. Christmas, like Mama, any like. I can't listen to it unless it's in December. And yeah. what's funny is like half of it aren't Christmas songs. Exactly. Like they're just they're just special songs that he threw on this project. Yeah, right. And, but I still can't listen to those. Yeah. Like it's <laughs> weird. It's so weird. And then I go back and listen to it like when it's Christmas time and I'm like, this shit is constant. <laughs> like, <laughs> so like I'm just like, yo, like what the fuck? And I remember like the words and the tunes and everything. Every and year. I'm just, I remember like, it all. So like uh, Stranger at the Table. Oh, Stranger oh. at the Table. Oh, play I'm play doing it right now. I'm playing it. <laughs> and, like, that was such a surprising thing, like, to release. Like, I never really expected, like, that out of a chance. Because it was it was just, like, yeah, me and Jeremiah got a, got a collab album, you know, it's dropping. Merry Christmas. Bumbo all the way. <laughs> oh, dude, it's so good. I love Chance. Yeah, he is, he is a... So. Wanna round. <laughs> ah, Jeremiah too. Isn't Jeremiah from Chicago? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. They do. They do good work together. Yeah, I feel like Chicago people, as well as like it being a fairly easy place to pop off, a lot of them just kind of work together and like keep it. In oh house. yeah. Like, and that's like uh, I think that's another reason why Chicago in particular it's easier. It seems easier to pop off. Yeah. Is because like Chicago is all about 
their local talent. Oh, like, yeah. they are always on the prowl for it. Uh-huh. Like, if you're big in Chicago, they are probably looking out for the smaller artists in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what... It's kind of what Chicago's all about. And yeah. It's really dope. Yeah. It's I, really dope to see. Do you know anything about the relationship between Kanye and Chance? Like, how did that... Like, how that happened? Was it, like... I don't know where that began. Kanye... It seems like... I, I've read things where, like, Kanye and has, like, known of Chance since he was, like, a real like small kid like it's not really yeah like i've read that like he had like not like a relationship with chance from a young age but Mm -hmm. like he was familiar with chance and his family for some reason okay like have you ever i can't remember what chance's dad did like does for a living but uh somehow it got them to meet barack obama when chance was like 14 wow so like chance He's he's been around the block. Hmm. He know he he's met he met Barack Obama like ten years before he actually again yeah. met Barack Obama. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is that's kind of crazy. It, it makes me it makes me wonder about this whole thing about you know whether or not Chance is an independent artist. You know because I feel like he's had a lot of a lot of steps up he's had that co-signs. other people haven't. Yeah, he's had yeah. a lot of cosigns. He uh, he's a loose independent artist. It's like. He still makes deals yeah. to like get his music out there, uh-huh. but it's not like it's not on the level that like an actual yeah. label would. Uh huh. Honestly, I feel like Always a lot of my baby. <laughs> a, a lot of being go, like a truly independent Always artist family. has to do with whether or not you can own your own masters. I feel like yeah, and like is. actually own the music because before when you sell it to a distributor or when or when you hire a distributor to sell your music, basically you still retain like the actual music itself i feel like i, I don't know a ton about the music industry yeah, i don't either but um you know honestly though on a, on a little a little side note i just thought it would be really interesting to like learn like how the music industry works and shit but i also feel like it could kind of suck oh i feel like it's a lot yeah it's because it, it seems really complicated for some yeah, reason and like like why is it this complicated i don't i don't understand why like, can't we put out music it's and just then people music. buy it yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> put out music buy it you know i don't need to worry about like your fucking a and r and yeah your like, fucking m- fucking sample clearances and yeah and sample clearances sample clearances annoy the, the shit out of me annoying shit i mean like i get it i absolutely get it like that's somebody else's work yeah but like if you're crediting them and they can uh-huh but like you know the sample clearances are important for them getting their money for it and stuff yeah. so like i get it like if you're good at something never do it for free see <laughs> money money is the problem it's the problem money is the root of all problems all, like we just need a mo world. money mo problems mo money mo problems that is a factual notorious biggie said it notorious biggie Notorious Biggie. <laughs> that just made me think of your Christopher Wallace intro. <laughs> 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 that shit was hilarious. I just remember listening to that. Like you just, he just sent it to me, and he's just like, "Yo, listen to this." And I was just listening. I was just like dying. Oh I my was god! Straight off top. He's like, he's like <laughs> pharmaceutical. What did you say? Pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical mogul, mogul. Christopher Wallace. And I'm like, you're like, wait a Biggie? second. <laughs> and then like when the, when the theme song stopped, I was like, Notorious Big is Christopher Wallace for anybody that still doesn't fucking get it. <laughs> That, was, that, was, uh, that, was that episode was a fucking mess. <laughs> it was like 15 minutes. I recorded every segment on a different day. Like oh my none god! Of it, Are you none serious? of it was connected. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, great work, great work. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, you know. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> the applause. The applause. Clap. <laughs> We've done that before too. Clap. Fucking. <laughs> fucking do it. <laughs> do this shit. But uh, that brings us. To the big day. The big day. Twas a big day. Twas. What an album. It 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 was it was as far as a debut album, I feel like he definitely hit his mark here. It's it's hard to I, I feel like it what it would have been hard for Chance to do this maybe two years ago. Because or two or three years ago because he was so popping. Like Oh yeah. Twenty sixteen, I feel like he ran twenty sixteen. Like Oh he did. He ran that shit. Yeah, I remember you couldn't open yeah. Twitter or anything without seeing was, something about it Chance crazy. the Rapper like he doing was something. Everywhere. And I was like, Okay, so you're doing this off the heels of coloring book and I was just like, whenever he does put out that next project, he ha- it has to be good. Yeah. Or he's gonna flop hard yeah this was like the most anticipated i've ever seen an album collectively uh-huh like 
being waited for uh-huh. since like views. Oh yeah. You remember when views was about to drop and everyone yeah. was like Drake already postponed it like six <laughs> months, like <laughs> That's just what Drake does. I, Drake I, everybody goes crazy for all Drake. I remember when he dropped more life and it was just like yeah, every, yeah. And he was just like, it's a playlist. And I was just like, get the fuck Yeah, when out he said it was a playlist, I was like, all right, fuck you, Drake. I'm yeah. going to call it an album. <laughs> I'm going to call it an album because, you know, that's what it is. That's typically what these releases are. A playlist, I feel like, is a it, the We've standard. Had this conversation, too. Have we? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, this, the standard has to be that the songs are not your own. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Like, the, otherwise, like, it's just your music. It's That's what an album is. A playlist is a song, is a list of songs, whatever. But, uh, you know. Fuck Drake. Any you know, <laughs> fuck Drake. We're on the, we're on the chance we're on the chance train, dude. So, what are some early favorites of yours from the big day? Uh, the big the big day. Hold on, let me uh, get the track list up. Yeah, let me pull that thing up real quick. I'll go off top then. I think uh, some of my favorites, like you gotta go. Uh, I loved Five Year Plan. Oh uh, yeah. That was a really good one for me. Um, mm-hmm. Do You Remember? Fucking great. Sun Come Down. Uh, Town on the Hill. Mm. Uh, get a Bag. You want a bag. You get, get a bag. bag. You need a bag. bag. You get, get a bag. bag. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> I, I fucked with... Uh, is this... No, that's not the one I wanted. Uh, How'd you feel about Hot Shower? Yeah, hot shower. That was a weird one. It it was it was weird for me, because, so I think my favorite was probably Do You Remember All Day Long. Um, all day long. Get was a bag great. was good. I loved the I big liked, day. I actually really liked. Um, found a good one. Single no more too. Ooh, that's what's on right now. Yeah, that good that song. that was fire. Um, but like, hot shower is weird because, I don't. Chance is not a trap rapper. Just no, not. he's not. He it has, doesn't work ever. He has a very distinct sound that's clean cut, and it's just chance. Like, nobody else is really replicating that, which is great. But when you put chance on, like, a trap beat, he can rap. Obviously, the dude's a rapper. Yeah. Uh, it's in the name. For, for example, I, I think of the um, freestyle he just put out recently with Lil Yachty, or, yeah. like, in May, I think. Um, like, he was going in on that shit. No, for sure. That, that was hard. But... Sometimes it just feels off when he does that sort of thing because you don't expect like, like, like bars like that from Chance. Like you expect like this thematic song where he's like rapping, you know, quirky lines and being being Chance generally, yeah. and not really sounding like the the typical, uh, like mainstream underground flow. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So that that was that was weird for me. I think the baby's verse was. The baby's getting to a point where he washes the everybody. The baby's verse was fucking. If incredible. he's on a song, he's yeah. washing everybody else that's on a song. <laughs> yeah, no, he definitely is. And the baby in general, I, I feel like he's one of those artists who is gonna come, like. He's. I think he's gonna be relevant for a while. I oh hope so. yeah, because he, the dude raps. The dude spits. Like he can he's, actually he's rap. He's southern as hell. Exactly. And enunciates. Yeah. <laughs> if you have that like combo you're uh-huh. you're done like yeah you're, like everyone the game is done exactly exactly <laughs> it's crazy and i feel like uh if he can start to evolve his sound kind of from project to project then he'll like really start doing some shit like, oh for sure for real like for real. uh yeah there's just some he sounds he's so like ti to me for some T. reason I, I can, he is so oh, ti very like, ti actually like that's that's the He's basically just the second coming of T.I. in my mind. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you listen to Hefe by Meek Mill and T.I., uh-huh. it might as well be baby instead well. of T.I. And they have that very distinct, unique voice. Yeah, they got it. <laughs> the deep rasp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like a head. T.I. used to be my favorite rapper back in the day. Oh, fuck, dude. I love T.I. Like, way back when Rubber Band Tip Man, Harris. like, that, that type of shit. Like, probably from, like, 2006 to, like, 2010. Yeah. T.I. was my guy. Yeah, I remember, uh, no, obviously Rubber Band Man was fucking great. Uh, Paper Trail. Uh-huh. Great, great album. Gosh, uh, live your life. Hey, hey, hey. God, I'm so oh, good. Oh, man, that was out the Dead classic. and Gone. Don't, yo. Dead and gone. Yo. 
I remember, like, I, I, that was one of the songs I had on my little iPod shuffle back in, like, middle school. Yes. <laughs> and I like, turn my head to the east. I, I don't see nobody by bruh, my side. I, I turn my head to the, to the west, west. Still nobody inside. So I turn, turn my head to the north. Tell you that again. That was, like, I, I remember getting all the words down to that song and just, like, going, just going. hard. And like, every time I need to listen to that shit. I, I totally <laughs> forgot about that song until you said something. <laughs> like, it, it's weird Swallowed how you forget about all... Call Pride. Yo. My homie's dead and gone. We need to get a... homie will be all right. We need to get a playlist of, like, all of those, like... The classics? The, the classics that... Not only classics, but the classics we forgot about. I don't know well, how we're gonna find classics. Them. It's gonna be kind of hard to because find the things them. we forgot them. <laughs> <laughs> but I know there has to be a long list. There has to be because I, I I don't know. I've listened to a lot of music. Yeah, we'll put it out. We'll put it out there. All right, all right we got you. We got yeah, you. Yeah, we'll work on it this week. But uh, the segment's about Chance the Rapper. That's right. <laughs> God damn That's it. right. That's <laughs> That's right. That's what we were supposed to be talking yeah, we, about. Yeah, we, yeah, we get off track. A lot. Yeah, that's fine. You know, let the conversation flow. It's let fun. It flow. Be free. Um, yeah, man. Just like go with, with the, the flow. With the flow, man. Like the waves in the ocean. Yeah, like, man. Roll, that's just bro. like that's just like your opinion, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like we all have our own. It's, yeah, it's man. fun. Like yeah. All right, but uh, <laughs> dude, the big day was definitely like it felt like a soundtrack to me. And what he says on Do You Remember, where he's like, my first album, every song could be the outro. Mm-hmm. It was like, absolutely true. Yeah. Like, any song on it could have been the outro yeah. song. Because, like, that's... The way an outro is supposed to feel to me is, like, it's supposed to be the biggest, like, yes, like, this is it. The uh-huh. credits roll. And, uh-huh. like, every song felt like it could have been, like, the, uh... Like the roll credit scene of like uh, Madagascar mm. the cartoon movie yeah okay <laughs> I, I can see that like I feel like this whole and album could have been a soundtrack to so, that movie that's actually what I think of a lot when I, or when I'm judging albums I try to think of like even particularly like songs like the outro like how did it how did it thematically make me feel did it make me feel as if I was getting like kind of broad strokes of everything that the album had to had to offer or is it like a full circle on the type outro thing or, or like yeah. yeah is it a full circle type thing or is it something that's kind of just like easing on the brakes you know like yeah it, it's it's i don't know you have to get that feeling but every chance song is that feeling oh yeah and like he knows this and that's why he i think he said that that specific bar oh it's and like there are so many good songs, like Handsome with Megan Thee Stallion. Oh, yeah. Ooh. He had a lot of features on here that I was not Baby, expecting. Baby, you look good, you look pretty. I don't know why you really fucking with me. Okay. <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion. Oh. Ah. Dick me dead, bury me pregnant. <laughs> God damn it. Come on, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Megan. Dick me dead. <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> Dude, Megan Thee Stallion's a different world. Maybe that's Different the title level. of this episode, Dick Me. Oh, didn't we, 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 we discuss about that, that last week? <laughs> <laughs> and I think I, I remember going, no, no absolutely no. not. And now you're posing the idea. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's hilarious. But yeah, I wish, uh, one thing I do wish is if, that I had like a clear cut list of the features. Yeah. That'd be I, nice. I kind of, well, so it's weird for me because I, I like when artists do that. Because you get songs like... Um, you get like surprises. Like I remember when Do You Remember first came on, uh-huh. I was like, holy shit, that's the lead singer for Death Cab for Cutie. Yeah. Like as soon as I heard it, I was like, excuse uh-huh. me? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. What are you doing here? <laughs> uh, the, 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 like I didn't really like notice when people did that until I heard... Um, what's this Vince Staples song with Kendrick? Uh, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Boy, yeah, right, when yeah, right, I was yeah, listening right. to that album for the first time, and I just pop, heard Yeah, pop, right, pop, and then bacon, Kendrick just the comes pop, on. Pop, pop I was bacon. like, wait a second now. Like, you just got a whole Kendrick verse, and you didn't even put the feature? Like, that's like, that's that's a, that's a big dick move. I like it. I like it when they do have certain features, like, listed, but then there's, like, surprise verses. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. like, on Logic's Everybody, uh-huh. J. Cole's J. Cole at the very at the end, very and I remember when he was African. tweeting, he was like, listen to every minute uh-huh. of this album, because it was, like, the last minute of yeah, the album, and the was. last song's, like, ten minutes, and there's, like, a four-minute gap uh-huh. of just instrumental. Yeah. You don't hear anything except exactly. the music, and then J. Cole comes on. Yeah. So, like, I, I heard that, and I was like, <gasps> <laughs> I know. I remember <gasps> I just replayed that, like, minute, and I was just like, 
Oh, oh yes. Oh yes. Hit it. Hit it. And at that point, J. Cole hadn't been really releasing a ton of shit. So no, no. Like, was that was that was when he silent. was in his yeah. like radio silence type appeal. Yeah. Like between 2014, Four Stills Drives and Four Your Eyes Only. So or it was what, right after Four Your Eyes Only. Oh, uh, yeah, it was. It was. That's kind of where Kendrick's at right now, but that's a different conversation. For yeah. Today. Um, yeah. But yeah. Like, Big I had a friend who was like, a, who was like, I can't stand that Chance doesn't list his features. Oh, yeah. And uh, their favorite artist is Travis Scott, who famously. Are you talking about Joseph? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> his favorite artist is Travis Scott, who famously does not list their features. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, just say you don't fuck with Chance. <laughs> <laughs> just say you don't fuck with Chance. Wait, Michael? No, it's Hunter. Oh, oh damn. Hunter. Oh, you know, I expected more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, he's, he's, he's fine. I, that, that, that just made me realize, though, that, that there are a lot of people, like, in that friend group who don't who who like just love travis scott for some reason yeah and like that's that's that's, I, that's been a thing yeah, with, uh, yeah. For, like my friend group every time new music comes out i'm always like you guys should check i like i'm thinking about like you guys should check this out and i'm like wait a second none of you would like none this. Of you would like <laughs> i'm yeah. like actually zero percent of you yeah. would enjoy the music because i feel like you're, you're like one of those people who's like who's kind of like me he's like yeah i guess travis scott makes good songs from like yeah time, absolutely like, like I, I fuck with travis scott heavy like he puts it, out a lot of good music yeah but i'm like like obviously i know travis scott uh-huh. when he's releasing the music yeah. you don't have to put me on <laughs> travis scott exactly like I have a bunch of random shit. Like when Anderson Pock dropped, I was like, I was like, oh, you need to listen to this song. It was the one featuring Three Stacks. Oh, uh, like that okay. was the one I was thinking uh, I was come gonna home. Sh- come home. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking I was gonna share that with them, and then I was like, they wouldn't like, they that. won't fuck with this. Yeah, like, the, I'm like, that's, that's, come home is hard. Though. I know. Yo. and like there's so many things where I'm just like, how do you not like this? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like, and it, I, I've had that so situation guess, a lot. Guess what? My that friend group's collectively favorite song was on the big day. Uh, don't. It was a hot shower. It was hot shower. Oh my god! It was hot shower. Oh my god! It okay. was hot shower. See, but n- now we're getting into this conversation and this this thing about we're just gonna go off track. You, I don't care. Okay, yeah, but, fuck it. Like th- there are people, or like there are certain songs that replicate a sound. I feel like, and just because it replicates that sound, people like it. And it's not necessarily about how the 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 sound was accomplished in that particular instance. It's the fact that the sound is there. So, I kind of, I kind of admire them for it, <laughs> cause like, I wish that I could listen to a song like Hot Shower and think, wow, this is fucking good. Mm-hmm. Like my immediate thought was like, eh. Yeah, me too. Like and like, but to be able to appreciate something like Hot Shower for what it is, like that must be nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that must be nice. <laughs> like, cause like all I can think while I'm listening to it is like, this is just a. This is just a normal trap song. There was like nothing but like drums. Yeah. There yeah. was nothing but bass hitting in the background. Exactly. That's all it was. And, and that's was just... another thing that like some people hear that and they're like, oh, oh fuck yeah. yeah, yeah, I hear bass hard. That's yeah. a, that's how I used to be until <laughs> yeah. like I like learned things. Yeah, exactly. And it's not even just about learning. <laughs> I just it's said about learned like... things, just like in general. <laughs> I got older. <laughs> I got older. I went to school. But like it, once you listen, I feel like once you listen to enough music. That eventually you'll like start to be able to nuance your opinion of songs like that and be like, this isn't necessarily original. This isn't necessarily something new or something that's it, it's it's not really bringing anything spectacular to the table. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's something that I feel like any other artist could have done, honestly. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where like I that's where I start to decide whether or not music is good is is like from this base opinion of whether or not it's original and it seems creative. That's that's where I've got I've gotten to a point where like if I hear something and I don't and I go I've kind of heard this before it's, yeah. I automatically dismiss it even though it, it might not be bad mm-hmm. like don't get me wrong it's not going to be necessarily bad music it's yeah, just going to exactly. be stuff that I'm probably not going to go back and listen to very much yeah. just because like I don't know. I've gotten to a point where like I want nothing but original shit. Yeah, exactly. Which is really greedy. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it is. Like as a creative, your job is to create. That's true. Yeah. Like and and, and, and to create, you got to create something new. Exactly. That's the best way to do this shit. That's the best I mean, way. To don't do take it from shit. me. I don't really know anything about this. I'm just you know. And that's that's your old kid giving my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why like why we like the artists who evolve. Because they're yeah. not putting out the same shit. Exactly. And that's that's just what you gotta do. You yeah. can't like I I'm cool with Travis Scott 
obviously he puts mm-hmm. out great music i'll listen he's a really big casual listen for me i mm-hmm. listen to a lot of his shit but it's not like i'm not head over heels for this guy exactly and it's because it's travis scott you know it's like travis most scott. most of the shit's the same but it's not a bad thing yeah like yeah. he changes up enough yeah yeah no that's exactly right and i i, I don't know i just feel like when you uh yeah, kind of bring this back to chance in in whole, I don't think he does the same thing every album at all. Oh, like, not even close. He really does change, and that's why he's been able to like keep everyone's attention, it's, like for almost a decade now. It's really cool too because he, while he does change a lot, he keeps enough mm-hmm. the same to like appeal to his original fan base. Yeah, like there's still enough ten day in him that it's like <laughs> that it's still like. Yeah, you're still just that kid from Chicago. Yeah. You know, you're not uh-huh. you're not larger than life. And I feel like this is kind of the logic problem. Like from the mixtapes to under pressure to tits, tits. <laughs> <laughs> to everybody and then uh, and then back to Young Sinatra, Young Sinatra 4. 4. He really had an identity crisis over this period, I feel like. It, it's like He went through a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. him and his wife separated. I think that took a te- heavier toll on him than he may have let on. I, I guarantee you, like, they were having these problems around maybe everybody or between everybody and, like, Bobby Tarantino, too, yeah. or something. But whatever happened there, like, it, it, it was like he wanted to continue building his sound. Uh, and then he was like, you know what, fuck it, we're just going to change the sound. Yeah. And then he was like... Wait, um, people don't like this as much. Uh, let's let's because go back I to loved, it. I loved where he was going. Yeah, me under too. pressure was everybody, great. Everybody. Did. Then he went into the incredible true story, uh-huh. tits, and it was great. Yeah. And then he went into everybody, and it was a little bit of a step back. Nah, and then it was he a went. Step back. And then he it was went. A clear step back. He also <laughs> had, like, the problem there is just like, like you said, he just he jumps around too much, like yeah. with different shit, uh-huh. and like. You gotta maintain something, you yeah, know? Yeah, exactly. Because, like, Bobby Tarantino, and, like, I get it, he was also doing the different identity thing. Like, he was, <laughs> But, like, Tyler does that. Yeah, he does, he and does. And Tyler does it successfully. Yeah. He does it well. Mm-hmm. Like, Igor is not the same as Flower Boy. Yeah, and Flower so Boy on. is not the same as, yeah, Wolf. Yeah, and, like, but when Logic took a shot at that, he, he just it just didn't hit the same. Yeah. He, he did something wrong. Yeah, and I, I just feel like, he honestly, I just feel like he was too corny. Like, yeah. To be honest with you, because Logic is another one of those artists that you were like head over heels for. Oh yeah, I fucked like, with Logic heavy. Wait, wait, was that when that was right, came out? That was right before everybody. Like it was the build up to everybody. Okay, yeah. and then everybody came out. And I, I was remember like, that. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> but I remember basically being like, like, I listened to everybody. I just remember like I had the APUS test like mm-hmm. the day that came out. Were you in APUS? I was not in oh. APUS. Yeah, you. I've never, never been in a puss. <laughs> 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 oh my god! <laughs> but uh, the, literally, like, I remember listening to it, and I, for a while, I refused to believe that the album was bad, just because I wanted me it to too. Be so I wanted good. it to be so good, so like, I wrote an entire review on it and how yeah, good it was, uh-huh. and like, it, I mean, the message was there. It the was me- very important. Obviously, it, it was, was very, very pronounced. Important. Like, you only had to listen to it once to get it. <laughs> yeah, and then I just didn't. And I like, didn't go back. I, yeah, I, and I have no no compulsion to go back either. Like, and that's like, ah, it sucks because it like it, he he was really building towards something there. Yeah, I think. yeah. And uh, I'm hoping he'll get back on track with like the Ultra eighty five or whatever that's supposed to be. Sounds like a dope album, man. Oh yeah, like yeah. Ultra eighty five. That's dope. Like, yeah. hit me with that because like it sounds sci fi as fuck, and I'm on board for anything that's yeah. sci fi. And like, and that's what he was doing with exactly. the Under Pressure and the I Incredible don't... True Story. He was forming like this sci fi like movie. Yeah. In front of us, and it was crazy. And like, I thought that that was like one of his the strongest parts of his music. How he was able to tie it to a thematic story mm-hmm. and be like, yeah, I'm gonna put skits in here that like actually like tell a story like i hope we get like i hope he produces like a movie or tv show oh yeah like he needs to with something like that i guarantee because, you will he's really oh he's he, he's really ex- like he is all about his shit lately yeah. like what he's like his creative uh-huh. shit and i think he is he'll he's bound to make something yeah produce something. i feel it i feel like and he'll... he's he's big on sci-fi and shit so i'm sure it'll be something mm-hmm. like that yeah and just video games and everything and yeah like, yeah he, I, I definitely think he's talented. It's just 
he doesn't always do the best job of uh, utilizing it. Utilizing that talent, yeah. So yeah, Chance the Rapper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chance did, the Rapper, folks. He did good. He did good with the Big Day, and he's been doing good since Ten Day. Indeed. From Ten Day to the Big Day. And lots of other things in between. Next segment. Double XL freshman class. We 2019. Had a, we had a pretty uh, decent collection here. Yeah, definitely the best that XXL has uh, put together in a, in a, since 2016. Since 2016. Like. 2016 was 20. I mean, 2016 had the names, bro. I mean, like, 20, you, had, like you the, had Yachty, you had Uzi, you had Kodak, you had Lil Dicky, you had Anderson and like, Pac, you the had, like, same cla- like, 21 Savage. To think about that, like, I know in, like, 10 years, I'm going to think about that 2016 freshman class and, and you're be, be like, like damn. Because, like, they're still going to be, they're probably still going to be doing Hopefully they'll their still shit. be doing shit. Yeah, I, 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 they're all really young. I, I would be surprised if they're not. But, like, that was in it. Denzel Curry was in that class, too. Denzel Curry, yes. Yo, that just reminds me. Like, we should just watch the 2016 Cypher, too. We should. We'll, we'll do that That afterwards. one was fire, yeah. too. Like, that was just, like, ugh. Yeah, but, so we just uh, we just watched all three of the Cyphers. Uh, we had uh, Blueface, YB and Corday, and Rico Nasty in one. You got Tierra Whack, Comethazine, and Roddy Rich in one. And then in the last one, you have YK Osiris, Lil Mosey, DaBaby, and Meg The Stallion. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's let's start with the worst one, the worst okay. collective cipher, with uh, Roddy Rich, Comethazine, and Tierra Whack. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, if you haven't been listening to Tierra Whack, you're missing out. You're doing it wrong. She uh, that that like 15 minute album that she put yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Bro, an album of it, Dick it, Me it, Dead, Bury Me album, Pregnant. <laughs> God damn it! It's an album of like 15 songs, each like a minute long, and that's it. And like. It, it, it's super short, it's concise, so good. but it's so good. Don't like, worry about me, I'm doing good, I'm doing great, alright. Hey. It's about to get hey. ugly, she's so free, hey. I just can't be hey. polite. It's hey. just hey. so hey. good. Yeah, no, Tierra Whack is like, and if you're thinking, like, she's up there with Rhapsody for me, like, one of oh, those Rhapsody artists who's like, so gets cold. no, gets absolutely no credit, but mm-hmm. they're out here doing it, not only rapping but as female rappers like yeah and like nobody like even, they're some of the best rappers like period yeah exactly and, but i feel like nobody gives them like the looks because they don't have the they're not what you expect from a female rapper for yeah they're reason. not cardi and nikki yeah exactly and like no no hate on megan the megan the stallion but i feel like she kind of has that oh she has that element to her yeah. but like she, i also i'd argue that meg the stallion has more spit ability i think so too than Definitely, Cardi definitely better than Cardi. I mean, yeah. Nikki when she's when she's on, she's fucking yeah, on. Yeah, like exactly. Nikki's going to body it. Yeah, Nikki can do anything basically. But like Meg is hard, dude. But yeah. like, let's Roddy Rich, he did pretty good. Yeah, not not bad. Comethazine did pretty good. Did pretty good, yeah. Tira Whack didn't have a beat. She freestyled off top and fucking bodied it. Yeah, and just shoved yeah. shit on Roddy Rich and Comethazine. <laughs> They were like, yo, fuck these dudes. Tierra, go in. <laughs> exactly. And then uh, Rico Nasty did the same thing <laughs> to Blueface and YB yeah. and Corday. Uh huh. They even they just switched the beat for Rico Nasty. Like they gave yeah. her a beat. They gave her, and her own. Switched beat. the beat for Corday and Blueface. And, and don't like, get me wrong, Corday and Blueface, they did good. They did like, good. They, yeah. They were definitely the second best cipher. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, but Rico, she killed. She went in. Like I've never, I, I hadn't really listened to Rico Nasty a ton before XXL. Uh, but just like listening to her Most on XXL, album. I'm definitely gonna go listen to like her music and shit because oh, I I feel good. like she's a really unique artist. She is like because she has kind of like this like aggressive vibe, but at the same time, I feel like she's like very uh, nuanced in how she like kind of portrays that aggression in her music and shit. And like yeah. she's actually got something to say along with the the emotion of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm weirdly attracted to Rico Nasty. Yeah, yeah, no, it's weird. You know, I, I never thought because uh, she's a little, she's a little scary. She put she puts off a scary vibe. But like, I feel like she's one of those girls who has that vibe, but then also like is like actually really nice. Yeah, one of those women. Yeah, women. Yeah, women. I'm sorry. Chicks. It's okay, Tavares. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Rico is. Yeah, she's she's great. She's great. She's great. She's yeah, great. it was collectively two pretty good ciphers. Mm-hmm. Then we get the. Last cipher, which was, um, it was it, it was perfectly balanced. Yeah, perfectly <laughs> balanced. Because it had what are definitely the two best ciphers, 
and it had what are definitely the, the two, two worst, worst ciphers. ciphers. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we get YK Osiris and Lil Mosey. Uh huh. That was that was um, something. Lil Mosey just like bro. I don't know. Lil Mosey here. I don't really know. And like he uh, he talked out. about how like he doesn't do the freestyle thing, and he decided he would for this one. Uh huh. I he shouldn't have. <laughs> he, should, he, should. he shouldn't have. <laughs> It, it was mean, not great. He, it was not. And he, I mean, like, you can't come on and s- talk about how the beat sucks. Like, yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, and if you're going to do that, at least do it well. Don't. Yeah, like, you can't shit on the beat and rap bad. Yeah, like, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You got to be Cause, like. Because what happened next, what happened right as Lil right Mosey gets off the mic is Meg later. the Stallion comes on and, and just spits destroys at, just rains that fucking shit. She like, Daenerys Targaryen this beat. <laughs> yeah. For 30 straight seconds. Which yeah. like, bit it get it, bit it it. Oh, man. Get in my DMs that you write in love letters. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, shit, you were love letters. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. This dude was crazy. <laughs> dude, she bodied it right after yes. he was like, nah, this ain't it. And he, she was like, fuck you. I'll show you what's up. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it was a, that was a really good transition to see. But then... YK Osiris comes on. YK Osiris comes on. And then, like... And YK Osiris, like, you can tell he could be good if yeah. he had some auto-tune on that voice. Yeah. Uh, but, like, when he doesn't, it's just it's just okay. And yeah. by okay, I mean not good. <laughs> yeah, no, no. No hate. It's just, like, that. that's not the environment uh-huh. that he should be performing in. He exactly. needs He needs to be in the studio getting that auto-tune but and putting out the music. Because like, I've heard him. Uh-huh. I've heard him on actual songs, and he's pretty good. Like, yeah. I can fuck with his music heavy. He reminds me a little bit of Boogie. Oh, yeah, yeah. A Boogie with the hoodie? A Boogie. I think, was he in 2017? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was about to say that's another one, if that, if he was in 2016. He was, he was close. But, yeah. Um, yeah. But, YK Osiris definitely is one of those artists that needs to be in, in the... He needs to make music, not necessarily. He's not Taylor. He's not a cipher artist. Yeah, Yeah. and that's how I felt about Anderson Pac too. Like, I was always so confused. Like, I'm glad they put him on XXL, got him a lot of like covers and stuff, and Mm -hmm. like, I wouldn't have known about. What's crazy is before Double XL, he'd already, he'd already worked with Dr. Dre on like Compton. So like, he was in there with like Lil Dicky and Lil Uzi. Uh Lil Yachty, 21 Savage, and, like, yeah. all these dudes, and he's already got, like, a bunch of Dr. Dre pr- production exactly. under his belt, and yeah. he's already released, in, like, a classic album. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, he's in there with these dudes, and he just seems like a different level. Yeah, <laughs> he does. And, uh, like, I just don't think that they tried to have him, like, portray, like, he was a rapper, and I, I just really don't think Anderson Pac is a rapper. Yeah, he's more R&B for me. He's, like, R&B, soul, soul funk type music, yeah. like anything but just straight like he'll rap obviously on and he songs. can he can rap but i feel like one yeah, he needs to write yeah, his bubbling. shit and it really depends on the beat and he does such a great job selecting beats and stuff and oh, like making, making his beats. own yeah, yeah making his own beats that it, it, it's easy for him to make it sound good but not like in the xxl formula where they're playing yeah. like these very basic mm-hmm. like hip-hop beats yeah and expecting you to just like show off your wordplay or your rapping ability for like, sure that's not how anderson Pac works but that's that's kind of the feeling I was getting with YK Osiris, but next we have the baby and the baby. He just he oh, he, he treat he treats the, the the beat like a fucking punching bag and just yeah, fucking and just, he beats the boom, beat up boom boom boom. Yeah, next thing you know, like the punching bag has got like a black eye and yeah, shit, like, and like, and it, like it's wait, jaws out of place. Bag. Yeah, <laughs> and, and the baby's a strong dude, you know. The baby is fucking brazy. This dude <laughs> goes. In, in on everything i swear he does and like uh people's criticism of him used to be like oh it sounds like all his songs are the same and shit and i can i can understand it like from his albums at least like they there's a similar yeah, I mean, sort like, of he's bounce probably, or whatever for me he's not really an album artist uh-huh. like that dude is a feature artist yeah anytime he's on a feature like i said earlier he's going to watch everybody else yeah, like that's exactly. just how he works that's how he operates uh-huh. and like God. Yeah. He just goes crazy. He does. And the way he was talking, he was talking about how, like, his chain doesn't mean shit to him. He's like, I just wear it because I uh-huh. wear it. And then Lil Mosey, when he was on, was like, I got me a chain yeah. and now she want me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was just like, bro, fuck that chain. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I just thought that was funny. Like, right after that happened, I was just like, you know what? We got two types of people in this world. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. He, and, like, just my favorite part was, like, the reactions. Yeah. Like, 
looking at like Lil Mosey, like when he was reacting to Meg and the baby, he was just kind of like, man, shit, <laughs> <laughs> man, they killed. Basically, me. yeah. And then YK Osiris was just like a little kid, like looking at them, like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, you see him dancing, shit. dancing the battle. Ooh, like, oh my hard. goodness, this shit's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And Meg the Stallion is just like looking at the baby, like, oh fuck. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just like, okay. So we're the adults here. <laughs> <laughs> and they honestly, really if are. you look at YK Osiris and Lil Mosey, they could they be, could be Meg like... the Stallion and baby's kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But dude, baby just bodied the shit. He did. He said, I'm coming like blading in this bitch. Yeah. Fuck around and I'm rocking the trench coat. I was oh. like, oh. <laughs> now, in the He's bar before this... that, he was like, I come out shooting. What do you say? I come out shooting sideways or something yeah, like that. Like some... It was so good, though. <laughs> oh, man. Just... He's gotten to this point where, like, every. He's got such a good, distinct flow yeah. that, like, everything he's on feels almost the way that, like, when Tupac was on a beat, mm-hmm. he would, like, it just, no matter what the beat was, it felt right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like it felt like, like, he, beat, his voice was the melody. The beat bends to his will. <laughs> exactly. Like, like his flow is the melody. Yeah. It doesn't matter and like what it, the beat is. As far really. as people having criticisms of that, like, I've never understood how, like, Yes, like I, we were just talking about how like you gotta like change and like imp- like uh, innovate and shit with your music, but like when someone has a flow, and it's a flow that's unique to them, so what if they replicate that flow? Like that's that's their yeah. flow. You know what I mean? As long as they're like doing it differently, like they're not saying the same shit. Yeah. Essentially, it's not the same beat. Essentially, like I think that it's fine to like do that, and that's just like the baby's flow is very him. I put diamonds on all of my teeth. Now they probably think I am intelligent, hey. and a homicide human interrogation. Hey. Asking questions, you know I ain't tell them shit. Ooh. I was like, ah, God. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, okay, go off. <laughs> You're like, damn, bro. Yo, yeah, no, in, in, like. The baby's just one of those who I feel like I'm really like I think he'll really progress into the future, but I'm glad he made XXL. Oh, me too. Because he he hasn't really been on for that long. No, like like a few months it feels like. My you know? my cousin put me on to his um his I think it was called Blank Blank uh album. Like it was oh, the yeah. one right before Baby on Baby. And nobody really knew of him. Mm-hmm. But he was from North Carolina. My cousins are from North Carolina, so he was like, listen to this album. Yeah. And I listened to it and I'm like, yo, the baby is fire. Yeah. And so I've been putting people on like all throughout like last semester or like the uh, uh, the fall semester last year. And then he actually blew up when he put on put on Baby on Baby. Yeah. And like I was like, okay. Well I want Shug. <laughs> I'm a young CEO. CEO. Shug. <laughs> I like Walker Walker Texas Ranger too. Oh show. yes, <laughs> dude, he's good. Yeah, no, he's good. And like whoever does his beats, like You're that shit bounces. Off. <laughs> like I've never, I think I've said this in the podcast before, but I've never seen so many white girls turn than when I played the baby at a party. <laughs> like, I'm going to be honest. Like, like you can't hear the bounce and not be like, ooh. You show okay. any white girl a picture of the baby and like it's just like foam at the mouth. Like, yeah. fuck me. <laughs> like, They're like, dick me, me dead, bury me pregnant. <laughs> Is that just going to be a thing now? That's my catchphrase now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's my catchphrase. God I'll damn. put it on shirts. <laughs> Penny Bloom podcast logo on the front. On the back, dick me dead, bury me pregnant. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get a lot of good, um, you know, looks. sales. Yes, yeah, <laughs> from that, it'll it'll go viral. And shit. Yeah, for sure. But dude, the baby is a different level. Megan the Stallion and the baby were by far the two best. Oh yes, and this, I felt and then like after them, I'd go uh, Tierra Whack, Rico Nasty, Corday, probably. Yeah, I could I could see that. I, honestly, I'll put Corday higher. I think Corday was probably the Cord- th- like three or four spots. There. Corday does a verse, and it may even seem regular, like whatever that verse is. But his regular is still so like, I don't. It, it's it's the kind of music that I like. You know yeah, what exactly. I mean? Like yeah. it, it's, it's, it's it's the bars, music I can it's I can clever listen to. Punch yeah. lines. Where he said that shit about the semicolon. Yeah, feeling yeah. spaced out like a semicolon. I yeah. was like, yo, yo. <laughs> Spaced Intelligent out? bars. <laughs> Your boy went to college. <laughs> <laughs> I think he actually did for like a year, and then he dropped out and became, you know, YBN Corday and shit. Respect. Um, but I, 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 I uh, if I remember correctly, he said that he would go back at some point and complete his degree. Oh, that's so. good. That's good. Uh, Blueface. Uh, how'd you feel about Blueface's cipher? Blueface to me, like, so when you know Tatiana and all that bust was down, like Tatiana. bust down, yeah. All that I was popping. I was like, mm, 
eh. But, like, it bumps, I guess. Oh, yeah, it bumps. Like, I'll listen to it and I'll yeah. dance. But, yeah. like, I, I, I will acknowledge that and, it's not a great song. And I'm still, like, I'm still, like, on his music, kind of. But, like, I res- I, I've gotten to the point where I've heard him on enough shit. Like, have you heard West Coast? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, songs like that, I'm like, he can rap. Yeah. And he does it differently. Yeah, he in a like, way he that, does he does his own thing. Yeah, he and does you his own thing. It. Like who else can He raps rap the way off? white people dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he but actually like but like when a white person is like kinda like, oh okay. Like <laughs> yeah. okay, yeah. you can like kind of get the rhythm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. But like Blueface does it and like does it well. Like, yeah, he does he does does it, do it well and uh he does does it well. He does uh, does it well. <laughs> but you know, I, I'm he's grown on me. He's grown on me. Yeah, That's he's grown on me too. I, like, I, I like at his, first I was like Blueface. I like his style. He seems you know Blueface baby. He did the whole thing where he was performing at high schools and shit. You know, yeah. he literally just went into those high schools and like was like, yo, so like y'all y'all trying to get me to perform? Like <laughs> I'm willing to perform for y'all and like literally like didn't even give the school any notice or anything. Just kind of showed up, <laughs> and I was like this dude's dope like, <laughs> it's kind of tight like I, and like blueface is the last artist you expect to clean up his music to perform at a high school oh absolutely but he was like yeah like i just had to do like some songs that weren't as a uh, like explicit Dirty, or yeah. whatever and i was like oh i think he did like dead Lokes and um tatiana yeah uh but like yeah you know good dude yeah, overall, it seems like this was a really, it was a pretty good class. Definitely best since 2016. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'd like, say. I can't even really remember the last, the years in between. I can't either. We'll have I to just, look into it. We'll have to do a segment on the best oh, yeah. double XLs ever uh-huh. at some point. Oh, yeah, the, we, the early 2000s. Bro, you, I like, think it was like 2012. Back, like, you had like Chance, and you had like, uh, I think it was 2013. Kevin Gates. Isaiah Rashad was Isaiah on there. Isaiah Rashad. Like, Vic Mensa when he Mensa, was good. When he was good, yeah. <laughs> there was a class, there was like, a, like I know Kendrick and J. Cole were in back to back years. Yeah. You had Absol, yeah, J. Rock, Action Bronson, J. Rock. Uh, who else? There were so many good double XL so freshman classes. Many. Like, and and we'll when you go back and look at, at look at those artists, like they are like solidified artists yeah. now, like yeah. very solidified. Which is why I've kind of always hated and loved XXL because it seems like they do a good job of putting on. Yeah, but sometimes they definitely miss. Yeah, but sometimes they definitely like. There's so many artists that I've seen on covers and been like. Who, who are you? Like I like I remember last year specifically. I looked at the list and I was like, "This is foreign yeah. to me. Like, <laughs> I don't know anybody." Yeah, here. I think that I think that happened to me last year too, and I wasn't really into it. Like there were like I know that Playboy Cardi was on uh, within the last couple of years. Yeah, I think that was two. Or was that was X? No, X. That would have been 2017. Yeah, that would have been 2017. So that was but two like, years ago. like that was like it that like I yeah. knew. I was uh-huh. like, "Damn, man, yeah. I don't know shit." Yeah, yeah. I was like, I ain't really keen on what the kids is listening what to the nowadays. Kids is listening to. <laughs> <laughs> Says a kid who's in high school. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at, at that time, I'm just an old head. <laughs> yeah, you know, I always knew it deep down. Yeah, I did. I remember when I wrote an article about how old rap's better than new rap, and somebody said like, "Whose grandpa wrote this?" In the newspaper, <laughs> ah. I think it was Keontae. I think it was oh, Keontae. Oh, it was. I don't that. <laughs> Yo, you see, I love my dude Keontae and best <laughs> friends. Like, but like, he, he definitely is one of those people who's kind of like you. Like, you're just an old head. Yeah, like, exactly. I was just like, come on. And I was like, like I was like, you know what? I, I Fuck it. A, if I'm a grandpa, I'm. <laughs> I, I've put him on to some shit though. I will say. I am grand like your father's dad. <laughs> Somebody grand was like it? Was that the baby that, that said that? That was Corday. That was Corday. Yeah, was Corday. he said life gonna be grand like my father's father. So or, he said uh, like my father's dad. Or my life gonna be dad, grand yeah. like my father's dad. I was yeah. like, uh. Uh, okay. 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 Yeah, it was just this double XL class. They did good. Yeah, they no, definitely did good. They, they Over, definitely overall. Did. And I, like just as far as picking the people who, or like picking a, a good mix of people, they did a good job. Oh yeah, for sure. I think they. I think they went eight for ten here. And so I've heard it. Like I saw a tweet by Reason, um, that he was like, you know, I think the XXL list is really good, but it sucks that we already know all these people. Yeah. Which is kind of the other side of the coin, where it's like picking those unknown names, like they have the chance to blow up. But I've just never seen that happen, really. Like nobody, like you do XXL to, or you watch XXL to watch the people you already know do it. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, like you don't want, like if you don't know the artist, it's gotten I feel to like a you're point. It, it, it definitely it. used to be like that, uh-huh. like where it was actually putting people on. Mm-hmm. But it's gotten to a point where it's kind of like 
a like shout out to yeah. the people who blew up in the past year. Uh huh. It's exactly. not really. It's not exactly like putting people on anymore. It's just it's it sells. Like yeah. they're doing it for money, yeah. which is fine. Right. I get it. It's a business, but mm-hmm. like they don't try to put people on anymore. It's just yeah. It's just the people who blew up. Mm-hmm. Basically. And, like, a lot of them, sometimes it takes a long time for them to get on XXL, which is Oh, it weird. does. It, it's like these people are not freshmen. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, freshmen, is, they've been doing this for a while yeah. now. Like, come on. Come give, on. Them some, give them some credit. Come on. Cut, cut them some slack. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Double XL, did pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Next segment. Euphoria just took place. Euphoria did just take place. The trials and tribulations of trying to pee while depressed. You know, uh, really a like uh, a struggle that I believe most people can identify with, you know? I can, in fact. I mean, working your 172 muscles to get up and walk those 35 feet just makes life sound like some sadistic joke. It does, you know? It really makes you feel like, you know, it's been 22 hours since I've pissed, but like... Why would I? Why? What's the incentive of pissing? Let's 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 break that down. All right. So I get to go. I get to walk thirty-five feet using my one hundred seventy-two muscles to sit on some cold porcelain and release toxins from my body. Or, you could keep those toxins in your body. You could stay in bed and get and a watch. kidney infection. But 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 you get to watch your favorite show in peace. But Rue almost got a kidney infection. <laughs> what's what's the offset? You see, there's a lot of potential energy built up, and the best thing to do is like, conserve that potential energy, right, for something that's actually meaningful. Like watching Love Island for 22 hours and two yeah, days. Yeah, you know, people got to recharge. They do, they do. That's just how it happens. This episode began with uh, a usual character breakdown. We it got did. Cassie it this did. week. Uh and we also got to see one Nick Blood, star of season two Justice and season Square. three of Agents Just, of S.H.I.E.L.D. Justice Square. Justice Square. I told Tavares at the beginning of this episode that this was definitely Agent Lance Hunter. He did not believe me. I, we I, waited until the credits to at the end. We searched IMDb, Google, Deep Web, like internet we searches. We went to the to dark find internet. Who this character was and who was playing him. There was nothing. The nothing jaw, on the, the internet. jaw was too square. If you look at Nick Blood as he's portrayed in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I believe that we may have a doppelganger on our hands. Someone who mayhaps be named Nick Blood as well. Mayhaps, indeed. The logistics just don't add up. You're telling me there is a doppelganger also in Hollywood by the name of Nick Blood? No one said he's in Hollywood. I've never heard of Nick Blood. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so we got that. We see that Cassie used to be a little ice skater. She had a lot of talent built up, but her parents kind of fucked her up. <laughs> fucked her up. <laughs> and you see, that's, that's, that's an example of a fucked up thing that just might happen in this show. I hope not. God, I pray not. But it just might. They it haven't gone like there yet, but they've gone a lot of places. They've gone some pretty dark places. Yeah. This episode had some of the most beautiful sequences I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. No, they were just, like, astonishing. The parallel between Rue collapsing on the floor mm-hmm. from a potential kidney infection, along with Jules making out and making love with uh, Anna, the new mm-hmm. chick that she went and visited, or... The friend of the chick she visited. While also thinking about Nate Jacobs as Tyler. Yeah, that was weird. And that it was, was weird. it was so interesting because it's like you I know it's a remove, dream. Yeah, but like it, they but do it so good so at that with the show. Interesting. Like you never really know what's going on. Yeah, in you really don't. Like it just like things are happening and you're just like, Okay, this is happening, I understand what is happening. Why is it happening? Not as clear. But you just enjoy it. And that's what I, that, that yeah, that's euphoria. That is euphoria. I really like the scene where like Rue is playing like this detective oh and my how they goodness. like played like while she's like in order just like so that the character has, you know, some some movement, some action to her in this episode, not is just laying in bed the whole time. They play it along with these sequences where she's like being This is detective. what's going on in her mind. Yeah. Basically and she goes in this manic state and like she goes to see Fez and she's just like being like this like stereotypical like 40s detective yeah. or something smoking cigarettes in the bathroom <laughs> we got this like uh you remember in the first episode how rue talked about how when she was young she was diagnosed with potential 
like bipolar, uh-huh. depression, anxiety, OCD, and all that. We got the, we haven't really seen any of those on screen yet. Yeah. Besides like depression and anxiety that go along with addiction. Yeah. We actually got to a point where she displayed her symptoms of bipolar disorder. She did. She went back between the depressive state and the uh, manic state. Mm-hmm. And her manic sequences were some of the best scenes the show's provided. Yeah, they were really interesting. <laughs> I liked when she was over at Fezco's place, the- and she was there while he was bathing his mom, mm-hmm. and then he had to leave. And she was sitting there imagining the pill bottles were talking to her. They were like, we are lonely, Rule. <laughs> we are lonely. <laughs> yeah, that was so interesting. I was sitting there watching. I'm just like, what is happening? Right I know. Like, psst, psst. <laughs> They're psst. Eat us, eat us all, eat us all, eat us, eat us all. This woman doesn't even know we exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that shit was crazy. Ugh. The uh, Cassie ended up telling. I'm not gonna lie, ha- it, it, this is really kind of boiled down to a simmer for me. This storyline with Cassie. Cassie's storyline, yeah. I mean, the ones that I'm obviously more intrigued with are the one, uh, the Rue, Jules, Nick, yeah. which got another dimension added to it this episode with Fezco. It did. Because Fez confronted Nate, not because Rue told him to, but because he wanted to protect Rue. Exactly. Rue asked him to help. But it wasn't Rue's asking that really convinced him. Mm -hmm. He was at his heart wanting to protect Rue. Exactly. So he threatened Nate's life. Said, you keep fucking... Hey, bro. Hey, bro. You keep fucking with Rue. I'm going to kill you. That's what he said. Those were his words. His words. And exactly. that's how he sounded. Verbatim. This leads to Nate presumably calling the police and ratting on Fezco's operation. So, Fezco finna go to jail. All right, people, my man Fez. Free Fez! Free Fez. Free Fezco! Free Fezco. When will Nate Jacobs be stopped? He's going to die. He has to die. Someone's gonna die. Someone's gonna die. This, this was, was an co- early prediction, too. Oh, I mean, like, yeah, someone was obviously gonna die. I was worried it was gonna be Fesco after he threatened Nate, but then he got the cops called on him, so I don't think they're gonna take Fesco out before he yeah. goes to jail. Like, that seems like, yeah. almost for Fesco, not a worse punishment. But <coughs> like, like for the show, like, it's worse. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Who do you think dies? And do you think they die in the season finale next week? Has to. Has to. It's the season finale. You gotta go big or you go home. It's euphoria. They're gonna go big. They are gonna go big. They always go big. That's gonna be a great episode. Obviously. Who gonna die? You, you, I, I just, I feel like any character could, well, not other than... Rue and Jules. Uh, no, not even them. Rue. Rue, Cassie, McKay... Yeah, because they just protected. mean nothing. Cassie and McKay and, don't uh, have anything to do with this. What's her name? I don't know what they're doing with that storyline anymore. Cat. Um, Cat. Yeah. That got a little more interesting tonight too, though. Yeah, that was that piqued my interest, and I was like, "This is really fucked up." I'm just I can't tell where the story's going anymore. Like at first, I got it, you know, embracing like you know embracing her sexuality. Yeah. yeah. But then I was just kind of like, okay. We you, get it. Yeah, you're just going to keep doing this. Okay, that's great. Cool. They developed it. Why though. are they... Like, we got, a, uh, we got a, uh, another another scene of her on a FaceTime, Skype-type call where mm-hmm. the guy's being charged 300 per hour. And uh, his screen is black, and his voice is altered. Do you think this is a character we've already come into contact with? No, no chance. I feel like it is. I think it would just make more entertaining TV. Mostly because, like, why else would they do that? That's I mean, true. I know it could be, like, a per, like just a random pervert. Yeah, like, that's not that's... something that's unrealistic, yeah. obviously. But, I mean, like, I just think it'd be more exciting. And yeah. I'm, I'm hoping it's someone I, I'm it. hoping it's it's something, too. But I feel like it is just that. It is kind of expected. It's what's n- kind of the norm if you're doing that sort of thing. What if it's Ethan? <laughs> My man, is he's too cool. He, he wouldn't do he that. He is too cool. But this show might just be like, fuck you. <laughs> you know, that's what this show does. They've done that a bit, yes. That that is that has been a truth. Ethan is pissed at Kat for fucking on Daniel. Did he know? Her. Have we confirmed his knowledge of the incident? We have not. Mayhaps 
he has become familiar and is now going to blackmail Cat. Mayhaps he will. He would have a devious, like a devious plot line coming out of that incident would make a lot of sense, I feel like. Twould. But like, are they going to take Ethan that far? No. They shouldn't. I don't think they will. But it'd be really cool if I predicted that correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimate reasoning. Legitimate. But let's discuss. Let's. Ethan, as a character, has shown no signs <laughs> of, okay, him okay. Being, of him doing this. Let's just talk about this in general. Who, who do we find expendable? Ethan. Expendable. 100%. I think he's solid, though. I think he's one of those people that has to stay... Has to stay As, in. like, a little bit of a reality check. Yeah, yeah, because he is... One, he's the most normal person the most on the normal show. He's the most normal person in the show. Besides Lexi, I think is her name. Cassie's sister. Yeah, yeah. She's dope. I fuck with her. She dressed yeah. up as Bob Ross for Halloween. Yeah. Automatically more attractive than every girl at that party. I hit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out Bob Ross. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I'm, uh... I'm thinking that at this point... If they're going to kill somebody, it's not going to be someone expendable. They're going big. Like, there's nobody in the, sto- in the storyline who it would matter if they died, you know? But like, that's going to make me so mad. It would have so to be mad. someone big. Because, like, this show has gotten me so emotionally invested to the point where it's like, it's like I'm actually emotionally invested. Like, because I know, like, with emotional things, you know, I don't want to touch that. So I'm like, yeah. you know, uh. And when I think of Euphoria, I'm like, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to be very interested, and I'm probably going to be very pleased. But at the same time, it's I don't want to watch this shit. Yeah, we were <laughs> talking about that when it was coming on. It was like ten minutes in, and me and Tavares just looked at each other, and we're like, why the fuck yeah. do we put ourselves yes, through like, this? Yes, like, what is this? It's so, it's so emotionally loaded and, like like strong in its portrayal of everything and also real like oddly realistic dude when when uh rue was talking about depression there at the end Mm -hmm. where she was like when you are depressed you go into the state where you try to remember the things that once made you happy and then you eventually cannot remember the things that make you happy so you just remember everything that was bad and now it feels Uh like your whole life has been like this and now everything will always feel like this yep yep mad accurate <laughs> <laughs> like bro i love how you just remembered that entire section off of one watch because it fucked me up <laughs> i was like yo she didn't have to get that real god damn zendaya she More did this shit right she, yeah <laughs> yeah her in that d- detective outfit was <laughs> well, chef's kiss you know <laughs> yes yes indeed uh they can't do anything to my boy Fezco, dude. <laughs> They're yeah. going to, though. He's the... Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's fucked. He's see, fucked. See, the, the, I can't... I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, all right. We'll talk about something else. Right. What, uh... I almost got to this a second ago, but Cassie told McKay... She prego. She pregante. And my boy said... She pregunta. So... <laughs> he, said, he said word for word... Yo, you ain't really think about keeping that. <laughs> How about that Dude. abortion, no? Dude, I got an abortion. <laughs> abortion jokes. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it's a little... Uh, <laughs> In this political climate, felt, how dare you? Yeah, yeah. How dare you? Have shame. In this economy? Sorry. <laughs> But, uh, I think he handled that about how most 20, 20 year old. I think he's maybe 19. He is 19. He's a freshman. Yeah. He is a freshman. So, he handled that about how any freshman athlete. In but, college like, would they've already that. handled how he understands he's probably not going to the league. Yeah, but, like, imagine how he already felt. See, he's yeah. like, "Yo, I'm not going to the league," and then he was like, "Yo, and now I have a baby on the way." Yeah, that would that would be a sucky situation to be in. Yes, indeed. I feel like though, in that situation, 
you have to be better than what he was. Oh, absolutely. Well, you should like, try your best. Yeah, which was like, okay. He handled it good after he handled it bad. Yeah, exactly. Like, let's not just think about myself here. Yeah, because she was like, I just wanted a dream for a minute. And he mm-hmm. was like, bitch, then go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. He didn't actually say that. No, he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> But he he brought it in, he reined it in, and he was like, you know, we'll figure this out. We'll figure it out. And I believe in him. I do too. McKay's a good dude at heart, I think. He I, fucked up, he's fucked up multiple times. Not worse than Cassie, though. Cassie has fucked up. Uh, McKay took his sexual frustrations out on her last week. Oh, yeah, I kind of actually and forgot that really, that. And that, that, I, that, that really kind of put a bad out. taste in my mouth for McKay. Yeah. Granted, he also did just get like a a rape simulation ran on him by his frat brothers that was as a hazing activity yeah. and that's super fucked up all like i've never understood hazing don't do it super stupid super super stupid that's that's my expert analysis yeah shout out lambda kai yeah shout out lambda kai that's Tavares's fraternity yeah shout out shout out they don't do the hazing nah we're not with that yeah shit nah but <laughs> HBO's Euphoria is hitting week after week after week. It is. And I, I, I think Zendaya has put together a good project. Zendaya and uh, Aubrey Graham, actually. I'm not actually going to give him any credit. I don't think he had anything to do with most of the show. He, the uh, most he probably has to do is like he the just, casting. He's an executive producer. I think that just means they give money. <laughs> they, 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 they give money and they sit there and like chime in every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> But you he's know. not like on set like no rude you gotta get into it <laughs> cut cut <laughs> oh wow he's like, how do you think the grassy got to be what it was because of me because I was of the di- six <laughs> I was directing this shit from my wheelchair I want my chips with dip <laughs> I want my chips with the dip <laughs> if you're not giving me chips with dip then I'm canceling this whole bitch <laughs> oh man Euphoria got confirmed for another season a couple weeks back I'm really excited about that. Season finale next week. Clap. Clap. You in the back. Clap. I see you. Thank you. So, uh, in other news with Euphoria, at the beginning, Rue shit on her mom's new boyfriend. I thought you were just going to say, like, Rue shit somewhere. (laughs) I was like, No, she didn't shit anywhere. She wouldn't even piss anywhere. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you see, that's the theme of the episode. Yeah, she refused. Yeah, no, she shit on that guy's head. Yeah, she was like, uh, what was his name? Rand? No. Dude, I was about to say Randy, too. (laughs) Was that his name? No, I swear it wasn't, though. Okay, we'll go with Randy. (laughs) All right, Randy. It's Randy. She was like, uh, Randy, shut the fuck up. (laughs) And he was like, did I say something to him? I was like, how dare you talk to someone like that or speak to someone like that? (laughs) And then she she apologized. She was like, Randy, I'm sincerely sorry that I told you to shut the fuck up. Oh, it was go fuck yourself. That's what it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sincerely sorry that I told you to go fuck yourself. What I should have said is that my mom can do better and I hate seeing you in my dad's chair. <laughs> and then her mom and boyfriend just fell silent. They're like, yeah, all right. Just like, <laughs> okay. And then I'm she just, went back She went back to her room and turned on Love Island. I'm just going to mosey up on out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, that's the general premise. Yeah. Um, let's just talk a little, like, broad strokes euphoria. Who's been your favorite character so far? Rick. That's his name. Was Rick. Because I remembered I thought of Rick and Morty when they said his name. Yep, it was Rick. Randy is close, though. We're still going to Why did we Randy. both go immediately with Randy? I don't know. That's fascinating. Rick and Randy. That sounds like the name of a sitcom. A really bad sitcom. <laughs> but, like, a sitcom whose intention is to be really bad. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I feel like me and you could play characters named Rick and Randy. Like, me and you just get our own sitcom where we're just, like, we're a progressive gay couple. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! Yo, yeah, that would be dope. And, like, the R&R, like, for the wedding would be d- kind of tight. Oh, that would be dope. The wedding would be the funniest part of the show because we just get shit-faced. Exactly. Save the date. Um... So, favorite character. Not Rick. Go. (laughs) 
I mean, Rick makes a strong. <laughs> <laughs> Rick makes a strong argument. His two he was a pretty decent screen. dude. He likes traveling. He likes, he likes the outdoors. He likes art and he, he likes does. wine. It, and... He he was the perfect man, as stated by every dating profile ever. <sighs> what a beautiful man! What a beautiful man, Rick. We love you, Rick. Rick and Randy. <laughs> so. Other than rude. Nobody's stealing we're gonna... the concept, okay? Yeah. We'll know. <laughs> we got we'll timestamps. We'll see. Rick and Randy. <laughs> so, uh, besides Rue, because obviously Rue's the best. Yeah, I mean. I mean, because Zend- it's Zendaya, Zendaya, yeah. Like, you know. I like Fezco. Fezco's a great character. Fezco's dope, yeah. He's a good dude, you know. Um, Lexi. Love Lexi. Lexi, yeah. Um, one of my favorite characters who... I only like because of the story progression side of it. Not exact. I obviously do not like the actual character of this person. I fuck with Nate. Oh, huh. he pushes the story forward. Fuck Nate Jacobs, absolutely. But he is obviously the most crucial part of the story. Yeah. the The problem I have with him is though he portrays such a stereotypical high school guy that it makes. Isn't you... that a little scary? But it, okay, so it is. But it's not necessarily realistic in most cases. Like, yeah, there are yeah. a lot of people who could feel For that who to a lesser feel, extent. Yeah, who could feel a lot of what he is, but still without the you know actual acting on it. But they also do take stretches and do a lot of crazy shit. With That's kind of the point of the show. Yeah, um, we were talking about this while the show was on, but how uh, this episode in particular reminded me a lot of the Great ba- Great Gatsby movie. Uh, like the way just like everything seems seemed kind of chaotic and they were yeah. jumping from storyline to storyline with really beautiful progressions and stuff uh-huh. but like the story as a whole also reminds me of The Great Gatsby because like Rue functions as the Nick mm-hmm. for this story you know like yeah. she's she has her hands in everything so she always knows what's going on that's true and then it's everyone else who's like the real focus of the story even though she obviously has her story lines yeah. but uh like, the main focus of the story is what she sees, not what she's going through, yeah. you know? Yeah. I think that's dope. I think it is, too. It's a really interesting way to tell a story, and part of the reason why The Great Gatsby is such a classic book is because it plays kind of with, like, that, that portrayal of the of the main story and how you're being fed that information and whether or not your narrator is completely reliable. It also kind of makes a statement about humanity, about how, like, you like to think that you're the star of your own movie, but, like... Most of life, you're if you're living a good life, you have people around you and you're thinking about those people, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, what if you are just the side bitch? <laughs> I mean, all progress is motivated by external force. Like, the people around you? Is that what you're saying? In a metaphorical way. Okay. Yeah, I was like, I, was, I couldn't really connect that to what yeah. we were talking about. I was like, I was trying to figure it out. It's like sometimes they just go over my well, head. No, it, it's like it's like it, being the center of your own stories is fundamentally impossible because you your story doesn't move. It doesn't become an actual story unless there's something around it, influencing it, propelling it. That's Therefore, that progress doesn't come without any sort of external force. Wow, you are wise. Thank you. You're like uh, Melinda May's dad in Agents of Shield. Ah. That's how I aspire to be, honestly. That man is my life doesn't great begin until I turn at least sixty. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to be <laughs> retired. No, literally, I've always thought I'm like re- that's like starting a whole new life where literally I don't have to give a fuck about anything, which is basically all that you want to do in life in the first place. Yeah, like Maddie. Yeah, exactly. I, what Being she realizes is that she really her. likes to do nothing. I like to do nothing, too. I also enjoy doing nothing. We did a whole lot of nothing this evening. We did. It was just one of those days, though. It's Sunday. It was fun. It was. I had a good time. Yeah. We watched a lot of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I watched you for it. Now we're recording a podcast. Yeah, indeed. Oh, speaking of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., there was another episode Friday night. Wonderful episode. Uh-huh. Um, I won't dive into it because you're still catching up. I, I am. But. In the in the midst and in, in progress. I'm not going to lie to you. <clears throat> I've grown less interested with this season. Really? And it's only because Is it getting I, repetitive? No, not in the slightest. Okay. Not at all repetitive. Not at all. <laughs> Everything is extremely original and new. Okay. But uh I think because I caught up, I'm a little less invested. I have to wait that whole week. 
yeah to watch it so like i i cool down i don't have to roll right into yeah. the next one where i'm feeling the shit still you uh-huh. know i'm just i'm turning it on watching the recently on agents of shield and then <laughs> I, I just keep i just catch up through that and yeah. like i don't know maybe if i rewatch and binge the sixth season it'll hit me a little different mm-hmm. but it's be, it's a little difficult right now mm-hmm. it's also just because of like what the story is in season six that's making it a little hard for me to deal with it uh, but you'll see okay okay um yeah so euphoria was good <laughs> <laughs> this, this week of euphoria solid episode one of my favorites really yeah i think this was probably go down as one of my favorites but i feel like i've said that about a, another U- euphoria episode recently um, so. I felt that way about the carnival episode. I think that was episode four. Oh yeah, I think I I think I really liked the episode after that. Oh three, Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, that was actually I I did say that that was going to be my favorite. I don't know now, you know, they they're really hitting on all cinder, cylinders. It seems like. Yeah, they're uh they're doing shit right at HBO as always. You uh, did we already talk about Watchmen and stuff in this episode? Was that during the introduction? I don't remember, but don't remember I'm excited either. for those shows too. It was HBO is on a fucking roll. HBO and it doesn't look it. like it's stopping at any time yeah. soon. Um, They're the LeBron James of television. Oh yeah, LeBron James is kind of becoming the LeBron James of television through HBO. That's He's got his own about. HBO series. Yes, indeed. It's called Power, right? No, Power is Fifty Cent series. I was kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was just trying to be informative. <laughs> Yeah, HBO, uh, they've got, what's that called? It's the Is it just called The Barbershop with LeBron? Honestly, I have no clue. I, I, I've only heard that he's doing a show. I don't know anything about it, though. Pretty cool. I watched the first episode. Oh, it's out? The first couple episodes. Yeah, they release like an episode every he's once in a while. He's not in it, is he? He is. It's, like a, it's, it's not a fictional. It's just like where a bunch of celebrities sit around in a circle and talk to each other. Oh, but okay, it's, uh, okay. It's still really entertaining. Yeah. Like the first one he had uh, Drake on, or the second one he had Drake on, one of the two. Of course. And uh, Drake was acting like LeBron was his dad. Not like actually, but it felt like that. Like I got that vibe. Because uh, LeBron was like, after this happened, what'd I tell you? And Drake was like, uh, I, I, I haven't. <laughs> Who, who's greater, Drake or LeBron? What the fuck kind of a question <laughs> is that? <laughs> LeBron! <laughs> How do we know, though? I'm sure Drake makes more how, money. How do we know? Though? <laughs> who who makes more money? I don't know. I That's feel probably like pretty comparable. We should look into that. We should look into that. You know, you want to just go all night recording session? <laughs> no, you fuck it. One yeah. one take. You're one take. <laughs> Never stop. Hi, Carly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the 24 hour yeah. episode. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Um, how do you feel about Drake? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is related to Euphoria, isn't it? It is. He's yes, an he is an executive producer. Drake to me is always uh, you can't dis- at a certain point in your life you can't dislike him. Usually he, that's when you first learn about him, you like get into him, right? Oh, for sure. I, was, I, I loved. Yeah. Like I remember, I had Thank Me Later on a CD, oh, yeah. and I'd listen to it on my way to baseball games in Liberty, mm-hmm. and that was like a forty-minute drive. So me and my dad would just be bumping and be like, "You can thank me now, uh." <laughs> Go <laughs> hey. Go ahead. Yo, I remember that was on NBA Jam, and I oh, oh yes, yeah. oh my god, it used to smash. Bro, NBA Jam. Yo, what are they? When are they bringing greatest? that game They're back? They're not. They can't. It, like, I feel like technology has advanced too much for that game to even be viable. I don't give a fuck. Bring that shit back on Nintendo Yo, Switch, bro. That shit was so fun. Like literally any time like the the demo, it don't matter. Like we don't even need the real game. Like I just played with the two teams that they gave you and it's still just as fun. It was so much fun. Like oh can you imagine gosh. now? Can you imagine this year's NBA Jam? Yo. You could have LA versus LA, you have LeBron and Boogie Yo. versus Kawhi and Paul George. And they would do some crazy shit with the graphics too. Yo. Yo. We need Yo. to start a petition. We do need to start a petition. We need to get we need to get Def Jam back. We need to get oh, dude, the Def Jam. We need games. to get uh, bro, the Def Jam games. I haven't thought about those in years. Yes, those were class. I remember playing like they those. were like Mortal Kombat style, but it was with, with artists. rappers. <laughs> yeah. That was amazing. That shit was crazy, and like I just remember playing Ti and Ludacris like in the, in in ATL, just fucking each other up in the Yo, streets. Yo, could you like, imagine that game would be so much fun now? I know, and it was already ahead of its time. It would do the shit where you land on the ground, like the whole earth would shake and shit, and they're just like, oh shit, playing rap music in the background. It sounds like you're fucking at a dog fight or some shit like just grimy like it, it, shit was like you can't you can't 
No, nothing else is doing that. Dude, what a great game. Shit's classic. Shit is classic. I mean, you could have, like, a Drake versus, I don't know, who someone Drake would beef with out of stupidity. Meek Mill. No, they're cool now, you know? I liked that they reunited. Out of stupidity, Drake would probably He tried. He almost with... tried to come at Kendrick. Kendrick, that's what I was about to say. He almost did, and I was like, dude, I know that wouldn't be the end of your career because you've already reached mm-hmm. a point where nothing's going to end your career. Yeah. But uh, that'd be about as close as it got. That's what I thought about motherfucking uh, when Big Sean, when they were teasing Big Sean and Kendrick, I was like, Sean, you do what Sorry. you do, but stay out of that. Stay out of it. Like, come on now. We know, like, you're going to get destroyed. Like, I don't care how many clever punchlines you get. K-Dot For every clever punchline that Sean has, he has a really bad one. <laughs> like Kendrick even put out one of the best diss songs, and we don't even know who who it was to. Like, dude, remember the heart uh, part four, like that shit. God, remember uh, his what was the verse where he like he was like that goes for Jermaine Cole, Big Crit Wale. Control verse, control with Big Sean. Yeah, he was like that goes for Jermaine Cole, Big Crit Wale, Pusha T, Meek Mill, ASAP Rocky, Drake. That's when Drake got really butthurt. Everyone, Big did. Sean, Jay Electron, Tyler Mac Miller. I got, I got love, love for you, you all, but I'm, I'm trying, trying to murder, murder you, you. Tavares. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on episode 11 of the Penny Bloom podcast. You know what we should have done for this episode? What's that? Something a little more Stranger Things themed. It's 11. It's episode 11. You, my man. We're just going to scrap this, actually. Turn it yeah, off. Yeah, you know what? Turn it off. Bye.